Freedom Files, Freedom Files. weekdays, Freedom Files. Monday through Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. Central on American Freedom Radio. Welcome to the show. You're listening to Freedom Files Uncensored Woo-hoo. on this uh, Wednesday, uh, December 22nd, 2010. I am James Burns along with Jeff, and for the next two hours, we be uncensored. Uh, because, Thanks to our friends at Skype. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, first off, uh, fuck you, Skype. <laughs> so, Freedom Files Uncensored, brought to you by Skype's Mistakes. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, apparently Skype's been down all day. For the record, you said it first. I said it first. I, I had to break the mold on Freedom Files Uncensored. Now, we're not going to throw F and S bombs all over the place. Nah. But we are Only gonna, when appropriate. Only when apropos. Apropos. Uh, but the reason why we're not live on American Freedom Radio today, well, there's pro- there's a rebroadcast airing at this moment. Ah. It's because of damn dirty Skype. See, that's how <laughs> we do our show is via Skype. And because Skype is down, yeah. we can't do a live show, but we are doing a show anyways. Woo-hoo. So not even Skype can stop us from bringing <laughs> you a live edition of Freedom Files. That's right. Uh, but uh, we got a lot of headlines to go over today. Don't forget, join us tomorrow afternoon. Hopefully Skype will be back up because uh, tomorrow afternoon on American Freedom Radio, we will be joined in the 3 o'clock hour by the one and only Bob Chapman from the internationalforecaster.com. And there's a lot of stuff we're going to be going over with him in the 3 o'clock hour. And in the 4 o'clock hour tomorrow, we're going to be doing the Festivus special Woo-hoo. of Freedom Files. Uh uh, Jeff, uh, myself, and my dad, Kerry Burns, the host of the Cannabis Corner, uh, we're each going to have our airing of grievances. <laughs> so anything Can that, that be uncensored? <laughs> yeah, well, I wish it would be, but it, it probably won't. But anything that's pissed us off the past year. Uh, whatever will we think of. Yeah, whatever serious <laughs> problems we've had in 2010. I uh, can't think of any. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, it, you know, nothing comes to my mind as of late either but uh <laughs> anyways uh, just a little uh f uh 411 for you guys uh, we'll probably be taking one or two breaks for the next two hours oh yeah uh but it'll be about two three minute breaks and we'll let you know and uh we promise we'll be back uh it'll probably be paused the video but we'll we're kind of yeah, it'll look like the feed's dead but it will come back yeah it'll, it'll come back it'll be you know, up right back. That, that's what, how we have to roll here on Justin TV. Yeah, we, I got to push that little stop button. That's right there on my screen. That's right, and you know, because yeah, we're only human. We're we're used to having breaks. Okay, yeah, we're we're lazy. We're lazy. So <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna try and limit our breaks per hour, though. Okay, so this is gonna be a uh, a shitload of headlines today. Yeah, because I for you know. It's very rare when I actually do this, because I do show prep every day. Oh, yeah. But the level of show prep I did last night was huge. Hmm. I did a lot of show prep. Yeah. And, you know, Skype wasn't going to stop me from doing a show today. So <laughs> we're going to go into the uh, headlines right now. Awesome. And I want to start off with a really, really sad story, okay? This, this is some, I wanted you to actually watch this video before, you got, before we started the show, but I didn't know we were going to have Skype problems, so you didn't have a chance to watch it. But uh, anyways, Jeff is hacking up a lung. Yeah. Oh, and as I see, uh, your mic actually does pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's not going to make it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to die. No. So where the hell is it? Ah, uh, no, that's not it. All this prep and he's not prepared. Well, I am prepared, but I just, it's, <laughs> I, see, that's, see, that's how much show prep I did today. I got so much show prep over here, so many articles to go over that the, the one article I want is buried somewhere. <laughs> so what's up with that? Uh, so Anyways, uh, it's it's a pretty sad video, okay? It happened in Seattle back in uh, August 30th, all right? Um, and here it is. Uh, how long does it take a cop to kill an innocent man? Eight seconds. Wow. Uh, it's a YouTube video you can check out. Uh, it was posted at uh, this website, uh, refreshingnews9, the number 9, dot blogspot dot com. In the video, it shows the shooting of John T. Williams on August 30th, 2010 at... 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 4.12 and 36 seconds p.m. Central Time. Specific time. I mean, sorry, specific time. Specific? Yeah, it's specific. Specific. Yeah, but, <laughs> but a King County uh, judge ordered a release of the uh, dashboard camera video from the Seattle police officer Ian Burke's patrol car. The 17-minute uh, video was taken from the dashboard camera. And it shows the, uh, the fatal him. Well, it doesn't show him actually fatally shooting mm-hmm. John T. Williams. But it gives you, it shows, it shows you exactly what happens, basically. Okay, but uh, just after a minute of, of the video, uh, the video shows William scuffling across the street. The uh, Burke is, you know, at an intersection, mm-hmm. 
And then he's carrying a board, minding his own business in front of Burke's squad car. Burke jumps out of the car and yells, hey, put that knife down. Then uh, Burke follows uh, Williams out of frame. And after two more commands, uh, there are a few gunshots fired, killing Williams. A woman is also shown crossing the uh, street and witnesses the whole thing from probably about 20-something odd feet away. And after the two-minute mark, uh, Officer Burke says, ma'am, he's holding a knife and wouldn't drop it. And uh, backup arrives about two minutes, 30 seconds into the video. <laughs> and about uh, three minutes into the video, a voice, probably Burke says, yeah, I'm okay. He had a knife open. However, the investigation has since showed that the uh, police found the knife closed. Wow. And uh, at the uh, five-minute, ten-second mark, another officer can be heard telling Burke, you did the right thing. Hang in there, Ian. Nice. So what happened was, in this uh, video, in one minute, you, you see the, this cop you know, going down the street of Seattle. Mm. He's at an intersection. A couple people cross his path. And then this, this, uh, this older gentleman, uh, John T. Williams, he's probably in his 40s or 50s, it looked like, mm. uh, African-American apparently. Uh, and, and I look at the video several times, and it doesn't look like anything suspicious. There's yeah. another guy crossing the street. And all of a sudden, Burke decides to jump out of the car and, and yells at him, hey, put down that knife. Now, what was this board that they say he was carrying? I don't know. I mean, I, I tried to find more information on it, but yeah. I mean, but it, it was just, I mean, what the hell's up with that? Hmm? Hmm. I mean, the guy had a knife, so what? Yeah, you were in a car. What is he going to do to you? And so he, he runs up to him. He says, hey, drop that knife. And <laughs> then within a few seconds, pow, 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 several gun, gunshots uh, ending uh, John T. Williams' life. So... That that's that's just sad. Yeah. That you know, one second you're walking down the street minding your own business. Yeah, you have the knife on you. It's not open. Yeah. Big freaking deal. <laughs> and just because a cop, I guess, is in the mood, or else maybe he's a he served in Iraq or Afghanistan. I don't know. Maybe he was having some <laughs> flashbacks, thinking you were an insurgent about to you know set off an IED and then just run out and just blew you away. Huh. So I wonder if he's actually going to get away with this. But the question I want to know is were the flags in Seattle at half staff? <laughs> I bet not. I bet not. Not unless that cop happened to get cut with that knife. <laughs> no, no, we're near the knife. And, and as, they, as you could tell in the investigation, the knife wasn't even open. Yeah. So, A, the cop was lying. Well, if he was carrying a board, more than likely the knife was a tool. Yeah. You know, he was doing something. I'm not sure what the board. Could you see the board in the uh, video? He was, it was obvious he was carrying something. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know what kind of board it was. Mm. It, it was kind of weird. I don't I don't Strange. know. Strange. But last time I checked, it wasn't illegal to walk down the street. Yeah, I'm wondering why why this cop popped popped out and went after him. I mean, uh, did they? You never found anything else on it? Any other explanation from the cop? No. 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 We'll keep looking into it. Of course, I didn't hear about this story until I, I saw the video, and yeah. this happened in August 30th, 2010. Oh wow. Huh. I know. A couple months ago. I'd do some more looking in for it. Yeah. <clears throat> But um, going on, uh, moving on with uh, headlines. Uh, here's another one I want to talk about. <laughs> oh God, I hate this guy. <laughs> New Gingrich blames Woo-hoo. the nation's problems on unemployed people. <laughs> Them damn unemployers. This is coming from the <clears throat> Huffington <throat> Post. New Gingrich, who is currently, uh, uh, you know, going back and forth about whether or not he's going to run for president in 2012, said in a political event in South Carolina last week that most Americans' problems can be blamed on the leftist news media. Hollywood tenure academics, overpaid federal workers, and the unemployed people. (laughs) Uh, Quote, unquote, I'm opposed to giving people money for doing nothing, he told a crowd of 250 cheering GOP activists in a state with uh, 10% unemployment. (laughs) God. Uh, Comparing unemployment benefits to welfare, a system he worked with uh, former President Clinton to overhaul in the mid-90s, Gingrich asserts that the country spent $134 billion last year on unemployment compensation and got nothing for it. Instead of wasting money, quote-unquote, paying people for doing nothing for 99 cents a week, uh, 99 weeks, uh, he would uh, make job training mandatory for anyone getting an unemployment check. This is coming from the L.A. Times. Hmm. And currently, there are five jobless people for every one job opening right now, making it very yeah. difficult for even the most industrious job hunters to find work. Yeah, see, that's the problem. I mean, I, I do agree with them on a certain point. They did overdo the extensions. They're still doing extensions. Yeah. That, that is paying people for nothing, but it's not like people aren't trying. It's not like well, there's jobs out there and yeah. people can't get them. And, and, or people aren't trying. People just can't get the yeah. jobs. And here's another issue, Newt Gingrich. <clears throat> you need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Okay, if it wasn't for you, you stupid slimeball neocon piece of trash, 
passing NAFTA back in the 90s, mm -hmm. we would have fucking jobs in this country. That's true. I swear. And that's, that's just the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah. Blaming unemployed people. Yeah. People that don't have jobs. People that would love to have a job right now. Oh, yeah. Would love to work. Would love to be bringing in some income so they could put food on the table, pay bills, and not worry about losing their car or their home and be kicked out on the street. Mm hmm but you have this joker, yeah. this New World Order puppet who wants to run for president yeah. in 2012, you know, blaming unemployed people. Yeah. Well, how the hell can you blame the unemployed? Yeah. It's not their fault. It's your fault. Pretty much. If anyone is to blame for unemployment, it's Newt Gingrich. Hmm? Jackass. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not like people are just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. There's just not enough jobs to go around, and the businesses are actually getting you know a lot out of it because there's... Plenty of people out there to choose from. They don't have to settle anymore. Yeah. You know, you got thousands of people applying. You, know, oh, yeah. you can pick and choose who you want. Like there was like a few months ago. There they don't have to settle anymore like they used to. Yeah. A yeah. few months ago, there was an elevator job. OK, that opened in New York. It was actually a couple of ele elevator maintenance jobs, mm -hmm. like I think three or four. And like thousands and thousands of people applied for like these four or five jobs. And that's like that's the same thing all over the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is some work still, but yeah. I mean, with each passing uh, month and well, like week I said, and day, five to one right now. You yeah. know, five jobless people for every job opening right now. Yeah, and that's very minimum. I'm sure. I'm sure there's more than that some other places. Yeah, that's that's I probably just, a very low average. I just don't understand. How the hell can you get away with saying what he said in South Carolina? Yeah, I don't get that. How? Who? Who the hell are these 250 people that are cheering? Apparently, they're working. Yeah, I can guarantee they're not of that ten percent unemployed. No, otherwise they'd be booing his ass. Yeah, they're obviously brainwashed. <laughs> yeah, see, that's what I hate about Republicans. Okay, and I hate the same thing about Democrat supporters. Okay, yeah. you you you're you're blind. Mm -hmm. You you you're Kool Aid drinkers. You follow the party line no matter what. Yeah. No matter how bad uh, W fucked up this country, no matter how bad Obama's fucking up this country, you guys continue to do what you do. Mm -hmm. You continue to toe the party line no matter what. Pretty much. And, you know, we really did get a nice one done by Newt Gingrich back in the 90s. Yeah. He got the ball rolling. Now, it wasn't just Newt Gingrich. It was no. also Bill Clinton, Al Gore, Man Bear Pig. And before him, it was George H.W. Bush pushing NAFTA, okay? So it's not just Newt Gingrich, but he was Speaker of the House at the time, and he was an avid supporter yeah. of NAFTA. Hmm. And we see how well that turned out. Yeah. So, you know what? I just get sick and tired of people. Because, you know what? People should call him out on this. Yeah. They really should. They should say, uh, wait a minute, uh, former Speaker. Uh, wasn't it you back in the 90s who uh, was uh, pushing NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement? Mm -hmm. And look what happened since then. Yeah. We lost countless jobs. Industries were ripped out of this country and sent over to India and China. Yeah. Yeah. And aside from that shit, I mean, if take this guy's job away. Make him unemployed for a couple of months, a yeah. couple of years, a couple of days even for this asshole. Well, and he he's going to be lining up for that unemployment himself. Well, he doesn't need You a, can't have yeah. somebody who's never been unemployed in his life of talking shit about somebody who's unemployed. Well, it because, just doesn't work that way. Because he's a man of privilege. Yeah, exactly. Be because he, he writes a bunch of shitty books. He probably has a ghostwriter for those. Oh, very much so. Probably doesn't, he, he probably hasn't even typed a freaking yeah. paragraph. Yeah, it's easy to bash unemployment when you're employed all the time, when you don't need unemployment. Yeah, when you, when you get thousands of dollars to go to all these stupid speaking engagements yeah. when you can write whatever book you want supposedly <laughs> when, you, when you get to be a, what a commentator on uh, probably Fox News they yeah. probably get a little money for being commentators oh yeah I'm sure they don't do that out of the kindness of their heart I'm sure they get a little something something a little yeah. green yeah but I swear anybody who actually supports and plans on voting for Newt Gingrich in 2012 you're a fucking moron <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, c I can excuse you. Maybe I, I, I really can't excuse people supporting Palin or Mitt Romney, but I understand why people would support them. I understand as a guy why people would support Palin. Yeah. Okay, she's a cougar, all right? She's, she's attractive for an older woman. And, yeah, for a guy, Mitt Romney's, you know, he's like, hey, I'm Mitt Romney. How you doing? <laughs> okay, I understand the sex appeal there on, on both ends. Hmm. But Newt Gingrich? <laughs> no. He has a track record. Yeah. And you know something? It's not a very good track record. So you know what? And whenever, you know, in a few uh, 
uh, months from now, they're going to start the Republican primaries. You know, people are going to start running because that's what happens. The year before the uh, election, that's the way it happened with uh, 2008. It started technically in the you know early spring of 2007, so that's about to start in a few months. Yeah. Anybody in this city of Shreveport, Bossier, I see out there with a Newt Gingrich sign, I'm going to yell at you. <laughs> I'm going to say, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> Are you a fucking retard? <laughs> I swear, I see a bunch of Newt Gingrich idiots on the side of the road. I'm pulling over. I'm going to go have a nice... I'm going to be friendly. Well, yeah. But I'm going to say, look, okay, look what this guy did. If it wasn't for him... Uh, we'd have a lot more employed people. We'd have a lot of jobs, yeah. a lot more industry in this country. The guy's a crook. Hmm. He's a neocon scumbag. Yeah. Ah, hi, caramba. Yeah, at least it'll give you something to do. Campaign against, you know, Gingrich this year. <laughs> yeah. If, if there's nobody you want to support, just, you know, go against somebody. Yeah, and, you know, Ron <clears throat> Paul right now is at 50-50. So, I mean, I, I don't know if he's actually going to run because he's going to be really bu- busy being the uh, chairman of that subcommittee. Hmm. So he's he's probably going to be focusing a lot on going after the Federal Reserve. Yeah, I don't see him really trying. They did. It wouldn't benefit him to try. It would, he'd lose too much money. And yeah. and well, I mean, he wouldn't lose money, but it would be a lot of it would be very It'd time be a lot of effort, a lot of time, and and pretty and, much a waste. And the <laughs> fact is, he is seventy five years old now. Oh uh, yeah, he is getting older, but he's still in great shape for a guy in his seventies. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, I understand if he doesn't run. I mean, I'd yeah. love for him to. I would support him whether he ran as a Republican, a Libertarian, or as an Independent, which would be best case scenario in my opinion. Yeah. But if he's not going to run, then then I'm, I guess I'll sit back and wait and see. But I, chances are, I probably won't have anyone to support. Yeah, there you go. Focus I, all your time on going against somebody. Yeah, trying <laughs> trying to wake up people. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> say, look, you know, don't support. Go. I, I mean, I I I would like to have a real conservative hmm. nominated by the Republicans, but I know that's not going to happen. I don't know if it's ever really happened for... I mean, maybe the last real conservative Republican was probably maybe Eisenhower. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, that was a long time ago. And, and technically, you know, he was kind of progressive in a way. I mean, you know, the interstate system got pushed under him. I mean, mm-hmm. he did a lot of things. But he, he was doing some good stuff. He, he built the roads. Uh, he was anti-military industrial complex. And he was the supreme commander of the Allied forces in Europe. So, I mean, this is a guy that, you know, saw firsthand the, the horrors and destruction and brutality of war. So, I mean, this is a guy that understood how bad war could be. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there are good good and bad qualities to Eisenhower. But, I mean, compared to uh, most of the past couple presidents we've had, uh, he was way better, in my humble opinion. Huh. Uh, going into the uh, AP article, uh, the Gulf oil spill is voted as the uh, top news story of 2010. The massive Gulf of Mexico oil spill triggered by a deadly blast at a rig used by BP was the top news story of 2010, followed by the divisive health care overhaul, according to the Associated Press's annual poll of U.S. editors and news directors. The uh, oil spill received uh, 54 first place votes out of uh, 180 ballots cast for the top 10 stories. The health care bill was up next with uh, 30 first place votes, and the U.S. election was third. In fourth place, the U.S. economy, which had been voted the, the top story in 2009. Uh, let's see, uh, here's the uh, top uh, 10 stories. And uh, let's see, the first story, of course, was obviously the Gulf oil disaster on April 20th. The explosion at the BP leased oil rig uh, killed 11 workers, unleashed a deep sea spill that ultimately spewed at least 100, uh, 170 million gallons of crude oil nice. into the Gulf. The consequences included devastation for fishing and tourism industries, huge and costly cleanup effort, uh, the management change of BP, the creation of a $20 billion fund to pay for damages. And a ton of VOCs and Corexic, uh pumped into the ocean yeah. and the shorelines, uh, making a lot of people along the Gulf Coast very sick with uh, the blue flu, blue p- plague that's going on that the mainstream media is conveniently not talking about. Yeah. Uh, what was the next one, Jeff? Uh, Health care overhaul. After bitter political wrangling, President Barack Obama was able to sign into law one of his major campaign promises, a $1 trillion health care overhaul intended to expand coverage to more Americans. But Republicans used public misgivings about parts of the plan as a springboard for election gains, and the overhaul faced a welter of lawsuits challenging its constitutionality, and which actually one of them won. Yep. Bravo. And, uh, and Virginia, and the reality is most Americans now 
are against Obamacare. Yeah. They've seen the the thousand plus page document. Mm-hmm. You know, they 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 they've read the cliff notes on it. A lot of people have looked into this, and there is a lot of bad shit in it. Mm-hmm. And people are like, wait a minute, what does this, what does this one thing have to do with health care? What does uh, building up the IRS, you know, hiring 60,000 more IRS agents have to do with health care? What does, what does uh, you know, having a paper trail on gold and silver purchases have to do with health care? Yeah. And then, of course, there's the big issue, which is the uh, requirement. Yeah. Everybody has to have it. Yeah. And you can't do that. It's bad enough that they did that to us on, uh, on car insurance. Now they're going to try to do to us on uh, health insurance. You can't do that. That's too much. It's too expensive. It's unnecessary. Yeah. Some people don't want insurance. I yeah. don't have insurance. I don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the same thing for my dad. You know, Kerry Burns, the host of Cannabis Corner. He doesn't have health care insurance. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want it. He hates doctors. I hate doctors too, but I, yeah. I still have health care just in, insurance just in case I have an accident and I have to go to the ER. But yeah. I'm not. I don't go do checkups. I don't trust quacks. No, checkups are pointless. It's just a way of 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 filling pockets. Yeah. And if they really want to overhaul health care, they need to attack health care. Yeah. You're not going to overhaul health care by throwing money at it. Yeah. You're going to throw overhaul, overhaul health care by taking money away. Yeah. Tell these fuckers to stop charging so much. It's too expensive. Mm-hmm. There is no reason why they should be able to charge as much as they charge. And the problem is uh, the health care system is corrupted. It's controlled by big pharma. Mm-hmm. So when you go to the doctor... They're not really giving you a cure. They're not really helping you. They're just, hey, here, take some meds. Oh, yeah. Hey, just fill out a prescription. That's, That's all they ever do. That's all they do. Tests and prescriptions. That's it. They're padding the bill, and then they're padding the pockets of the farms. That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. And I'm sorry. I, I can't stand for any of that because Big Pharma is part of the reason why it costs so much. Yeah. For all the damn drugs. Yep. Those are the drugs that should be illegal. Yeah. Yeah, I guarantee you it does not cost them that much money. To manufacture those drugs, but they charge a lot for it. Yeah, thirty, forty dollars a pill and up. It's yeah, and, ridiculous. And how many times have you and I each, you know, and everyone else listening right now, have watched uh, commercials about some of these pills? Mm-hmm. And half of the commercial, they talk about the side effects. Oh yeah. And most of the time, uh, the side effects uh, cause the very thing that you're taking the pill in order to prevent. Oh yeah. Like like there was one for depression a while back. Uh, suicidal thoughts. Okay. Yeah. How do you know? How do you know it's the drug causing that? Or it may be just that the drug isn't working. <laughs> yeah. I know. But so, so I'm depressed. Okay. I'm, I have suicidal thoughts. I go to the doctor. He gives me this, this medicine. However, the medicine causes me to have any more suicidal thoughts. <laughs> How is that helping me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't Ridiculous. understand. All right, the next top story for 20 twin. Uh, 20 twin. 20 twin, that's right. <laughs> U.S. elections, President Obama called it, quote-unquote, uh, shell-lacking, that uh, the um, election in which the Republican surged to a majority of the House of Representatives gained more governor's offices and legislative majorities. The Democrats were able to hang on to their edge in the Senate, leaving the U.S. with at least two years of divided government. Uh, because of the two parties. Get rid of the parties, no, well, more, divi- no more division. Well, the, yeah. the, that's an illusion, though. It is true. The division yeah. is the illusion. It's <laughs> yeah. a two-party puppet show. Now, there are some within each party that hold on to their certain beliefs. Yeah. There are good Democrats, like there are good Republicans, not many yeah. of each. But at the same time, for the most part, it's, it's all WWE wrestling. But yeah, but, but even the good ones, the ones that aren't just following the puppet mm-hmm. masters, uh, are just as bad because they're busy fighting each other. They're yeah. busy fighting the other guy. Oh, yeah. it's all the Republicans' fault. It's not our fault. Because oh, it's all the Democrats' fault. It's not our fault. Yeah. It's everybody's fault. Because that's the society we're in now. Instead of working together, mm-hmm. coming together as conservatives, liberals, libertarians, moderates, whatever, and meeting in the middle and creating some common ground and going from there, uh, we all have to be you know, going you know, extreme left, extreme right, whatever direction you're going, and when you do that, eventually uh, the rubber band breaks. Hmm. Everything snaps apart. But, I mean, that, that's the sad reality we live in because they'd rather infight. They'd rather infight. And, I, I mean, on one hand, I'm kind of glad that this is going to happen in the, in the 100th and 12th Congress, that there's going to be a lot of infighting between the Senate and the House. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it's really not going to make anything better. No. Are, are they going to repeal the Patriot Act in two months? I fear they probably won't. They're gonna, it looks like they're going to extend it, but I would like to start a campaign for causing the opposite effect. Get a lot of these freshman uh, Republicans on board with maybe repealing it. Of course, that's, that's, a, that's a wet dream. Yeah. I mean, th- th- 
Yeah, that's the point with all the so-called division. Nothing's just going. Nothing's going to get accomplished. No, that's that's all there is to it. Which, on the good side, means nothing bad will get accomplished, but nothing good will either. Yeah. So, so. what they, you know, as the old saying goes, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So, yeah. what's the uh, next story? The U.S. economy. Economists said the deepest recession since the Great Depression was over, and consumers <laughs> began to spend more as the year neared to a close. But the unemployment rate stayed well above 9%, and home prices are weighed down by foreclosures and sluggish demand. <laughs> Big shock. Um, <clears throat> bullshit. <laughs> uh, the the uh, economy's still in the, the shitter. Yeah. It's still in the toilet. It's still uh, sinking circling closer and closer down the pipes. It's probably halfway from the toilet to the, uh, to the uh, sewers right now. Yeah. That's where our economy is. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. I mean, more and more people are unemployed right now. Yeah. 43 million people are on uh, food stamps. Social Security is about dry as the desert with maybe a few trickles of uh, water left and maybe mostly oasis, you know, fool's paradises. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I saw a billboard the other day for uh, uh, pimping. Uh, go to uh, socialsecurity.gov to apply for uh, retirement. And it had this little old lady on the billboard, and it said, Re- ready to retire? When you're ready to retire, go online to blah, 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 <laughs> and retire online at social Secu- or for, uh, and apply for Social Security benefits. Yeah. They're, they're still telling people to go get this crap. Yeah, it's I ha- not there, but come on. Come get it. I have a reality <laughs> check for everybody in this country, okay? If things continue to go the way they're going... Uh, you'll get to retire when you're in the ground. Yeah. That's when you get to retire. Unless you take care of it yourself. Yeah. Unless you take matters into your own hands and stop trusting the government. Yeah. Yeah, you can't rely on the Social Security at this point. No. Which is why it's ridiculous that they're still taking it out of our fucking paychecks. Yeah. Yeah. Although I don't have that problem now because since I'm unemployed, yeah. but... You know, when I was employed, that was the majority of what they took well, out of my check. And that's what's something I'm never going to see. It's great that it's going to my dad when he retires, yeah. but will it be there when he retires? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, I don't have a problem with, with the idea of the Social Security system, yeah. you know, as a small, but people need to realize what it is. Yeah. It's not, it's not the one egg in the basket. It's, yeah, you can't live off of it. You have now to have several eggs out there, okay? <laughs> it's one little option because, uh, you know, a lot of people, they don't make that much money. I understand this. And they go 40, 50 years working their ass off. You know, make it barely above minimum wage, and whatever money, extra money they do have, they have to try and make a try in some sort of capacity to make a better life for their children. Yeah, I understand that. And so, by the time they're ready to retire, they're too um, old and worn out and unable to work anymore. Uh, they weren't able to save. Yeah. So I understand the need for Social Security to help out in that capacity, but I think I think there needs to be um, a system in place where people you know, who are making, are doing okay, making, say, uh, six plus figures a year, obviously don't need Social Security. Yeah. But people under five figures a year (laughs) obviously would need something down the road. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Uh, The next top story in uh, 2010 was the uh, Haiti earthquake, uh, already the Western Hemisphere's most uh, destitute nation. Uh, Haiti was shattered by an earthquake on January 12th. It killed at least 230,000 people and left millions homeless. Crucial reconstruction projects were slow to get started. Disease and political instability added to the woes. Now, this was one of the saddest stories of the year. Hmm. All, the, all these people that were killed in that earthquake. I mean, already the Haitian populace uh, didn't exactly have it uh, very good. I mean, most of them lived in uh, you know, shacks, to say the least. And after that earthquake, it just went from bad to worse in Haiti. I mean, sometimes, I mean, I know things are bad here in this country and things are going to get worse, but sometimes you do have to realize that the grass is sometimes still greener on our side. Yeah. And it it is, you know, yeah. Uh, Eventually shit is going to hit the fan. Eventually things are going to get worse and more people are going to lose their jobs and we are heading into a depression. However, However, it could always be much, much worse. It can always be worse. And at the same time, it can always be better. And that's what you have to shoot for, making life better Mm -hmm. instead of worse. Unfortunately, we have people in power right now that their, their goal seems to be to make things better for themselves and worse for the rest of us. 
All right. Yeah, the thing that got me about the Haiti earthquake, I mean, I, I understand it was a horrible thing. It killed lots of people. But it's just another example of how everybody is real quick to help out in an emergency. But as soon as everything's over and it's out of the news, it's done. They're not helping anymore. When's the last time somebody donated to Haiti? Yeah. But back when it happened, January 12th, you know, that week after, oh, yeah. the month after, a couple months after, everybody's all over it. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got to do this. You got to help Haiti. Well, what about what Haiti was held? It said they were already the most destitute nation. Why weren't we helping them before? Mm-hmm. What about people in America? We only feed the homeless right now two times a year, yeah. November and December. Yeah. Yeah. What about the rest of the year? Yeah. yeah. Nobody ever wants to help out, my, myself included. It just shows the, the human nature that, that we don't want to help out unless it's right there on the surface, guilting us into helping yeah. out. And we could be helping every day, but we're not. A lot of Haiti's problems is their own problems. They, they've always had a corrupt government, yeah. and they've always had bad leaders, and basically a banana republic at best. So they have really suffered in, by the, the people that they've elected. So in a way, the Haitians are responsible for the way things were in their country. But at the same time, uh, we have our own problems here. Yeah. Yet we go around spending billions and trillions of dollars policing the world, invading countries, Mm -hmm. telling other people how to live their lives, uh, while at the same time we have people starving in the streets of America, living in tent cities. The federal government signed plenty of checks over to Haiti for the earthquake repair. It, it's that's another problem with the American culture is that we have this this arrogance that we're still the greatest in the country in the world and that there's nothing wrong with us so we're not going to help anything if we if we help out the local homeless people yeah. it admits that there are that we have a problem it yeah. admits that we're not perfect yeah. so we we ignore that and we help out people in other countries because that makes us feel good about ourselves yeah no I don't have a problem at, from an individual base you making the decision to help somebody whether yeah. it's you know somebody in your own town or somebody across the country or even across the planet, if that's your choice, if you have the money to do it, Mm. do it, okay? But I have a problem when you have our president signing over hundreds of millions of dollars to other countries without the consent of the people or Congress. Yeah. I mean, where did he get the money from? I guarantee you that had to have been on loan from some other country. Yeah, well, we don't we, have any money left. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. He, he wrote a hot check to a country that was in need you know, temporarily right now, and he's been ignoring the rest of the country. Yeah. Yeah. He's been ignoring all the other countries out there. I mean, it's all fine, and it sounds like I'm a complete asshole for saying don't donate to these people, and that's not what I'm saying. The point is, everybody wants to donate at the time when it's yeah. in the media, when it's cool to because, donate. Because it's the when cool, it's, it's a it's fad. It's the fad, exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it's become, compassion has become a fad, and that's just, it's, it's sad. And I, I agree, it shouldn't be that way. I mean, I, I'm all for charity, but it should not be done by governments. Yeah. Because governments uh, have an issue of having strings. Mm-hmm. We're going to help you out. Yeah. But, you know, down the road in the U.N., when we want to do a little something-something or we want to put a base in your country. Oh, yeah. You just remember that couple hundred billion dollars we gave you. Oh, yeah. I guarantee Haiti's going to be part of, you know, America so it's, very it's like soon. Trusting the government is very similar to trusting the mob when it comes <laughs> yeah. to money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure, I'll help you out, guy. I'll give you a couple thousand dollars. I mean, forget about it, but you know something? Maybe, maybe, maybe not, but, you know, a couple, couple years from now, maybe I need you to do a favor for me, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's the way I see the government. And I agree, it is a fad. Yeah. Every, like, Katrina was a fad. Yeah, nobody cared about it. Nobody cares about them today. And but when they was, Katrina hit, everybody was all about, and, let's save them. And Louisiana's still suffering from that, mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, that, that, in my opinion, was the fault of our government. Yeah. Because the Army Corps of Engineer, en- Engineers, whatever the fuck they're called, <laughs> they screwed that up. They knew that those levees were going to break. They, I mean, basically, New Orleans sits below sea level. They've yeah. known this forever. Yeah. I mean, I remember a special on the History Channel about a year before Hurricane Katrina, talk, you know, the natural disaster special, where they go through scenarios of worst case scenarios and one of the ones they did was a hurricane hitting New Orleans. Yep. And basically what happened in that special happened in real life. Yeah. Back in 2005. Yet our government did shit about it. Yeah. They're more concerned with blowing up cities and killing people across the world mm-hmm. who did nothing to us. Fighting, you know, several unconstitutional wars, you know, pumping money into the military industrial complex's pockets, then securing, really securing and protecting the American people. 
They don't care about that. That's a farce. Hmm? It's a charade. It's an effing lie. <laughs> All right, next story, 2010. What is it? Ah, our favorite, the Tea Party (laughs) Movement. Yeah. Ah, Though it lacked the trappings of traditional political organizations, the Tea Party Movement had a profound impact on the 2010 election, influencing the stances of Republican leaders and enabling some maverick challengers to oust GOP establishment candidates in the primaries. See, this is one that kind of... I kind of have an um, emotional attachment to because... 2009, I joined the local Tea Party here, mm-hmm. and we did a lot of stuff for them. You were even, you even helped out a oh, little. Yeah, I got sick to my stomach at, at the, the the last one we went to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but at first it was for a good cause because they were about the Constitution, they were about standing up to the government, mm-hmm. and they made they made, they were trying to make the case. This isn't about Republicans or Democrats. And I went along with it, you know. I was proud to be part of the local Tea Party. I shot several videos for them. We we worked on several productions for them. Yeah. We did a five-minute letter to uh, Mary Landrew concerning the health care. Yeah. I videotaped it. You and I sat in here for hours, mm-hmm. you know, one Saturday night working on it a year ago. You know, got it looking really good. It got thousands of views on YouTube. And, you know, we also did several speeches, you know. me, I, I went out to a couple by myself. You, you helped out a couple, too. And I posted all those on YouTube. We did all the production. Mm-hmm. I didn't charge them a dime for it. I did it out of the, you know, the goodness of my heart because I, at the time, believed in the cause. And what did they do? They it went went all religious on us. Exactly. It got twisted. It started out as a good idea and got twisted by somebody or some group of people into something it should never have been. Yeah. That, that meeting, that one meeting that I went to with you, the last one we went to, the Red River Tea Party rally, supposed to be about tax day. You know, it's supposed to be about, you know, rallying and holding up your signs, you know, get rid of the taxes yeah. and all this crap. They get up there and you never hear anything about taxes. I didn't hear a single th- word about taxes in that entire event. Well, Tom Cryer talked Tom about Tom Cryer it. did, but, he, but he, he came in about, what, halfway through it? Near the end. Yeah, near the end. Everybody else is talking about God. We've got to save this country. We've got to put God back into this country. They want to take God out of our schools, but we want to put God into your schools. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was like we were at church. I know. It was pathetic. And, and, what's and when they weren't talking about God, they were talking about, you know, the military. Yeah. They were talking about war. We've got to go and kill these people. I'm proud that my son's over there. Yeah. You and it, it, it was sickening. I got you know, physically sick holding that camera. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And I, I unfortunately, I saw this coming. Yeah. And I know, yes, we live in the Bible Belt. Yes, yeah. there's a lot of Christians here, and I respect them. They have a right to their religion, just like everybody else does, mm. to believe or not to believe. Yeah. Uh, but I think they went for the easy yeah, and they audience. Did. And they they did. went God because they knew that was yeah. an immediate and, audience. And you know something? Every single uh, monthly meeting I went to, every single Constitution class I went to, yeah, they, they opened with a prayer and closed with a prayer. Mm-hmm. I just sat back and bit my tongue and just, you know, like, this yeah. is their thing. They can do it. They need but, to keep that shit in church. That's what yeah. they need to do. But they, it kept getting worse and worse mm-hmm. and worse. And finally, I, I, I told them. I was nice about it. I'm like, look, I mean, I did not sign up for this to go to church okay yeah. i'm not religious i have my own spiritual beliefs about things even if you are religious you have to recognize it has no business in politics yeah it, it doesn't church and religion is not supposed to mix that's why we don't have a state religion in this country that's true look at all the countries that do look at all the countries that are very england, driven by religion england has a state religion mm-hmm. the church of england the yeah. anglican church uh, the, uh mexico yeah. it's the catholic church just yeah. like in the philippines and look look to the other extremes you got you know the, these so-called terrorists down there in yeah. you know the middle east yeah. you know they their they official all, god is allah yeah. you know or whatever the yeah, hell they well, want muslims to do. in general yeah most of them are not terrorists most no but are, this is a country that's very much run by their religion Se- several con- con- yeah. well, several countries in the middle east yeah they all are 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 muslim countries and yeah. they have a right to that they do but they shouldn't be run but by their religion the they big should. difference here is this country is not supposed to be like that no. I don't care. You can say this is a Christian country to your blue in the face. It's not. If it was a Christian country, we'd have a Christian American church. Mm-hmm. As you know, I'm they, sure they're pushing for it. The founders did not want it that way. In fact, a lot of them were deists. Yeah. Some of them were actually atheists. Yeah. A couple of them were Christian. Okay, I'll give you that. Yeah. But not all of them. No. Ben Franklin wasn't. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just nuts. No, your religion should have nothing to do with with your government. Period. Yeah. It so, has nothing to do with anything but your religion. That's all it is. It's a religion. Yeah. And sadly, at the end of it all, you know, the, in my opinion, the Tea Party has, uh, at the best, fractioned into two tents 
uh, the Palinites, who are a bunch of neocon teocons, yeah. and the smaller faction, which are the Rob, Ron Paul supporters. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, that is the saddest part. And I think that was intentional. I think the, the, the Republicans came in and said, you know, we're taking over. Yeah. These guys are hurting us. Yeah. And that, that was the perfect way. You yeah. take over and you turn it into something that nobody wants to follow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, as far as Palin goes, I, I don't think we really have much worry about her. She's got that damn reality show going now. She's losing every bit of credibility yeah, she ever had by being man. on a reality show. You know, you can't do that. You can't yeah. show people your life uh, in a reality show and expect anyone to take you seriously. Yeah. I, I think she killed her career by doing that. Yeah. Well, I mean, which is a good thing. I, I think she's done that over and over again. Yeah. But you know but what's that's, funny? That's just taking it too far. I saw a photo from her interview the other night. Uh, who was it? Was it with Ann Curry or something? Could have been. Uh, anyways, it's in her living room, okay? And, and you know, they're commenting about the caribou she killed. And she, so she does, huh? Yeah. And you know what caribou are, right? Yeah, they're they're reindeer. Yeah. Well, they're <laughs> well. I mean, reindeer. That's what I, I, we actually did. I looked it up earlier today for some reason. Uh, my wife didn't know that reindeer were real. We were watching something and yeah. it had reindeer in it. Yeah. And you know, she'd made some comment. I said, "Well, reindeer actually are real. I've seen them." Yeah. And I looked it up, and it said that they were caribou. Yeah. That's the actual class they're in. Yeah. And then I started looking into it and found they were from uh, Alaska. My wife actually made the comment, "Yeah, you let Sarah Palin shoot a reindeer on one of her <laughs> reality show specials and see how quickly her ratings drop." Yeah. And now, you know, and, apparently, and she did shoot a reindeer. I, I believe it was a caribou. So. So, I mean, I personally, as a hunter, I don't have a problem with her doing this. Yeah. But it's hypocritical when she says, I don't hunt or shoot for sport. When you have, a, you know, a, a bear hide behind you. Yeah. And, and they, they make this in the caption, you know, the comment. You know, how can you say this one thing when you have a bear hide yeah. on the floor with the bear head? Maybe she ate the bear. And yeah, right. just yeah, the hide. She, yeah, she had some bear burgers and bear steaks. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I've I've hunt I've hunt white tail deer in, down in Texas, uh, but I yeah, ate the meat. Mm-hmm. I didn't just when I was a kid. Okay, I shot varmints. Okay, I shot squirrels and possums, armadillos, jackrabbits. Okay, I shot them for sport when I was a kid. All right, I'm not proud of it, <laughs> but I did it. Yeah. But now I'm now whenever I kill something, it's for you know it's a pest control around my house. If there's a, you know, some sort of, most of the time, I won't even kill a spider. Hmm. If it's a big spider, I try to catch it and I let it outside. Now, if it's a roach, I'm smashing it. <laughs> but for the most part, I mean, I don't kill. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, if a mosquito lands on me, whack, I'm going to take it out. <laughs> All right. That's just the way it is. Or yeah. if I, you know, have a fly buzzing around my house. Yeah. Yeah. It's done. But I only kill for that reason. Uh, I would kill to defend myself. Yeah. Or any of my friends, family, or loved ones, or I would kill if I was hungry. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. She definitely did not eat a bear. Yeah. You, know? no. you can't have a bear skin rug and say that you, you, you don't kill for sport. Yeah. Well, and in her defense, maybe she didn't enjoy the sport. She just wanted that rug real bad. I don't know. Um, and, I mean, we don't know that she's the one that actually killed the bear. Yeah. But I'm sorry. I, I have a serious problem with people killing animals that there aren't many left. Yeah. I mean, bears. Is there really a reason to kill a bear or a no, lion? There's not. Or Unless a tiger? walking through your neighborhood trying to kill your kids. There's leave them alone. I mean, for the most part, bears. I mean, the people that get killed by bears are usually the ones that are out there in the wilderness asking for it. Yeah. I mean, like that that couple that was doing that documentary about living with grizzlies or something. Mm-hmm. They did it for a couple of years, and ultimately uh, they ended up being uh, their tent got attacked and they got killed by a grizzly bear. Sorry. Yeah. You put yourself there, you're gonna do it. You're gonna die. Yeah, that's yep. what it comes down to. Exactly. I mean, these are dangerous animals. Okay, very dangerous. And if you want to put yourself out there, that's fine. Hmm? But you have to be man enough or woman enough, <laughs> adult enough, to accept responsibility for your actions. Yeah, but and, I'm sure people rallied around. Ooh, we got to kill the grizzlies. They killed those people. No, <laughs> and that's what I don't like. Okay, anytime. Say a, a mountain lion, you hear a mountain lion kill, kill a, jo- a jogger in a park out in the west or somewhere. Mm-hmm. They have to go and hunt down the, the cougar. Yeah. Or a shark. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're swimming around in their what, land. What about You're walking all the, around on their land. What about all the times one of us goes and kills a cougar or a shark for no reason, just to do it? Yeah. Do we deserve to die? No. It is what it is. Yeah. Now, now, when it comes to one human killing another human, that's when you have to... Yeah. Or when you're, when you're, you know, if, if you're in self-defense, fine. Yeah. But if you're, you know, a cold-blooded killer, yeah, you need to be punished for that. Yeah. But, I mean, just to go out and kill a cougar for no damn reason. 
I mean, yeah, if there's one charging towards you. Coming right for us. Yeah. If it's coming right for us, or yeah. yeah, fine, okay? But there's better ways, all right? I mean, if and it's just sad because there isn't many uh, apex predators left in the wild, okay? They're still out there, but we've killed so many of them over the past centuries. So a lot of them have been killed, not in defense, but for sport, for trophies and whatnot, hmm. that we really do have to respect what wildlife we still have left. And I'm not trying to come off as a environmentalist or yeah. anything, but I'm just stating the facts. Yeah, I mean, as a, as a culture, we are very obsessed with, whether we know it or not, trying to stay at the top of the food chain. Yeah. That's why they're going after them. You know, a, a mountain lion kills a jogger. Yeah. They're not killing it because, oh, it got the taste for blood. Maybe it'll do it again. It always has the taste for blood. They're doing it. Yeah. Basically, to get revenge. And, and they really think I, these animals think that? Oh, the, oh, the animals will learn a lesson from that. I mean, no, I, it, it's, it's a ridiculous primal urge to stay the alpha, to stay the top of the food chain. A lot of people don't even think about, they don't even bother to think, well, why did the cougar kill that jogger? Yeah. A, maybe the jogger was jogging through its territory. Yeah. Maybe she had a couple of cubs nearby and she felt threatened by that human. Yeah. Or maybe she was starving to death. And, you know, we've killed so many other animals and, you know, torn up most of her forest where she can't, you know, survive on anything in any True. rodents or whatever. She, you yeah, know, why do you think they're coming so close to residential areas? Yeah. They got no choice. Yeah. There's too many residential areas. I know. So, I mean, it's just, I mean, I'm all for eating a burger. I, I, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a meat guy. Yeah. And I don't have a problem hunting deer. But when you go hunt, uh, you should hunt for things that you're actually going to gobble down. Yeah. Don't be like the ass. Don't waste it. Don't be like the assholes back in the 1800s that went out into the West killing buffaloes just for their hides. Yeah, that's fucked or kill up. Kill an elephant, and cut off the tusks, and leave the body to yeah, rot. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, I fucking hate it whenever I see that shit. Yeah. And I'm a hunter. Yeah, it but did... they they have no real respect for the animal. Yeah, none, none whatsoever. Yeah, I mean the the Native Americans, you know, they killed buffalo too, but they were smart. Yeah. They they used the hide, they used the meat, they used every they yeah. used the they, they used, used the, the bones, bones, they used the guts, they used everything. I mean, there's nothing wrong with eating animals, okay? There's nothing wrong with killing animals. We are omnivores. Yeah. We're supposed to have meat and plant in our diet. That's just the way it is. Now I respect vegetarians and vegans. They have a right to eat the way they do, but they shouldn't impose their will upon the rest of us. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm not out for just killing for sport anymore. Like no. I was when I was a kid. I really wasn't in it for sport anyways. Yeah. I just did it just to do it. Uh, the next uh, top 10 story of 2010 was the Chilean mine rescue in a year of disasters and squabbles. This was a miraculous feel-good story trapped nearly half a mile underground for 69 days after an August 5th mine collapse. 33 Chilean miners were freed one by one uh, and entranced uh, global audience watched the uh, on television. So they... They were entranced about this story. I didn't really pay it much. Yeah, I didn't follow it much either. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad they got rescued because yeah. most of the times. I'm wondering why it took 69 days to get these Well, guys. they were down. They were half a mile down. Yeah. So that's, that's an awful <laughs> I guess lot they of, had to re-drill to drill yeah. another entrance. And, they, yeah. and, they, and the problem was you had with, with uh, the way uh, geology is. I mean, you have to be careful where you're drilling or else you may kill them. Yeah. So they had to find the right spot to drill into that's not going to cause another collapse underground. Did everybody survive? It looks, I, I guess, well... See, see, that's the thing it doesn't specify in here, but... Well, at least 33 made it out. Yeah. And that's very rare. Most of the time, nobody survives. Yeah, I was, I was very shocked after, you know, when I first saw so, the story. Oh, they've been down there that long. They're dead. There's so no way they're still alive. I, I, I do, you know, I would prefer having feel-good stories in the headlines. Oh, yeah. But most of the time, most of the crap we talk about sucks ass. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what was next? Speaking of sucking ass, Iraq. Mm. The U.S. forces formally ended their combat role and looked ahead to planned withdrawal. While Iraqis endured months of bitter political haggling after an election that failed to heal Sunni Shiite divisions. It's just an unconstitutional war. They had nothing to do with 9-11. Nope. Saddam Hussein was a secular dictator. Yeah, he was mean, a brutal asshole to his people, but we mm -hmm. have countless dictators around yeah. the world. Plus, at one time, he was our best buddy yeah. against the Iranians, all right? And I think this was a blood feud, plain and simple. The Bushes, you know, uh, you know Baby well, Bush wanted to do something for Papa Bush. Oh, I'm going to get that guy that, you know, he was so hard hardcore after. Yeah, and the irony is the, the original name for the operation was Operation Iraqi Liberation, which spells out <laughs> oil. <laughs> but, of course, That's a good one. Of course, people caught on really quick, and then they That's changed it, it to Operation Iraqi Freedom. Yeah, oil interests. That's all they're looking for. Yeah, it's about, it was about oil. 
It pro- there probably was a little grudge there. Yeah. And it was about the military-industrial complex. And smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Oh, well, all- we can't find this guy, or we haven't convinced you yet that we've, we've stopped the terrorists, so we need to tell you, oh, they moved over here. Let's go after these guys, just like they've moved them again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the ninth big story of the year was uh, WikiLeaks first came online postings of a huge batch of U.S. military documents from Iraq and Afghanistan. Then uh, WikiLeaks uh, started releasing a cache of classified State Department diplomatic cables, creating embarrassment for Washington oh, no. and its dealings with other nations. And uh, You don't want to be embarrassed. Don't do anything embarrassing. Yeah. And I, I hate this. The, they're, they're getting onto this guy for putting out what was mostly declassified. They say it was classified, but a lot of it's ancient stuff. It was probably declassified anyway. Mm-hmm. Public knowledge. This guy just did the homework and found it. Uh, and it's all about embarrassment. Oh, it makes us look bad in these other nations. Yeah. Well, most of this crap we shouldn't be doing in the first place. I know. Yeah, you shouldn't be giving these diplomatic coupons to all these people, letting them do whatever the hell they want. Exactly. Oh, you're in our country, you know, so so we're going to let you get away with whatever you want. You can go rape that prostitute and kill her, and we'll, we'll cover it up for you. Yeah, it's, it's okay to bomb cities and blow up people with drones. That's fine. Yeah. But don't you dare release this information, Earl. We're going to call you a traitor, and we're going to hunt you down, mm-hmm. even though you're not an American. Yeah. That was so fucking funny. All these neocons on TV saying, he's a traitor. <laughs> uh, you dipstick. He's from Australia. <laughs> How the fuck can he be a traitor to the United States when he's not even an American citizen? Nice. If anything, you neocons are the real traitors. It just goes to show the mindset people have that anything on the Internet is located from wherever they're watching it. Yeah. You know, oh, I live in Shreveport, so this must be an American site that I'm on. Yeah. yeah. The Internet's everywhere. I know. Just because it's on the Internet doesn't mean and, that this guy's an American citizen. And for that reason alone... The FCC has no authority to do what they're going to do with the Internet regulation. Yeah. It's not an American Internet. The Internet is, you know, worldwide. Now that's why they call it the World Wide Web. Yeah. But, of course, you know, that's not going to stop our bureaucratic police yeah. state government from doing something about it. But, you know, I've noticed uh, AT&T is starting to put some little digs into it, just a little subliminal messaging put into <laughs> their ads uh, where they actually mention things like that. You know, the, the, the Internet started out as the World Wide Web. Yeah. It's worldwide. It's for everybody, not just blah, blah, blah. And then they start going into talking about yeah. the, the lower prices being available for everybody. I know. Uh, they're, they're starting to kind of feed people a little bit of this, you know, it is the World Wide. It's not just America. Yeah. And that's and, a good thing. And, Jeffrey, what was the number 10th thing of the year? Afghanistan. After months of deliberation, President Obama ordered a troop surge in a major bid to turn the tide of the nearly 10-year-old war. Intense fighting pushed the Taliban out of some longtime strongholds, so, yeah, supposedly. But the militants remained resilient, and Afghanistan remained best, or beset by corruption and ineffectual government. Huh. Yeah. Another war we shouldn't be involved in. Yeah. We shouldn't be in Afghanistan, and we shouldn't be in Iraq. And if you look at this chart real quick... Uh, from the Cato Institute. Now, obviously, y'all can't look at it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, anyways, there. See, you can't buy video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, for anyone listening on YouTube, I'm for, I'll, I'll link it on YouTube, okay? Yeah. But uh, or I may just pop it up real quick or something. I'll see I don't know. what. I'll do something magical so you can see <laughs> the chart as well. But it shows an incredible expanding Afghanistan war. This is coming from Cato. Uh, the chart uh, uh, dramatizes something that uh, most Americans don't realize, the tripling of U.S. troops in Afghanistan by Barack Obama. Ha! Lovely. Like, already, I mean, let's see, uh, he took office in 2009. Troops were under 40,000, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, Going into 2011, troops are right under 100,000. So he sent nearly at least 60,000 troops into Afghanistan. You know, and this, he hasn't hidden it. I've, I remember that news, you know, those news stories. You know, we're going to send more troops. We're going to send more troops. We're yeah. going to do a surge. Yeah. But while he was running for office, he vowed, while he was, you know, going, you know, through all the 57 states, yeah. you know, he vowed during his presidential campaign, I will bring this war to an end in 2009. <laughs> of course, he was, you know, talking about Iraq. Yeah. But then in July 2008, he suggested that he would send more brigades, about 8,000 8, to Afghanistan. So... But, I mean, that's 8,000, you know, not the same as 60-something thousand, yeah. Mr. President. I think you got your, your numbers wrong again. <laughs> yeah. That's just sad, though. You know, that's getting worse over there. Yeah. And we're about to go to a break, and we'll be back at the uh, top of the hour. We'll be back at the 4 o'clock hour central for the second hour of the Freedom Files radio show, uncensored, on justin.tv slash FFRN. Hi. 
Uh, you'll also be able to listen to this on our YouTube channel. We'll, we'll be back tomorrow afternoon on uh, American Freedom Radio if Skype is up. And yeah. during the uh, 3 o'clock hour, we'll be joined by Bob Chapman, the internationalforecaster.com. But the uh, final thing I'd like to talk about in the final minute is the 2010 word of the year from AP is austerity. Austerity. Austerity, the 14th century now defined as, quote-unquote, the equality of our state of being austere <laughs> and enforced our extreme economy. Set off enough searches that uh, Merriam-Webster named it the word of the year for 2010. Uh, the dictionary editors announced uh, this past Monday. Wow. Don't you love the way they define words in the dictionary? Yeah. Austerity is the quality or state of being austere. Okay, let me look up austere. In other, in other words, shitty. <laughs> so shitty was technically the, the word of the year. <laughs> it's only going to get worse in uh. 2011. All right, we'll be back in f about five minutes um, for another hour of the Freedom Files radio show, Uncensored. Freedom Files, Freedom Files. weekday, Freedom Files. Monday through Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. Central on American Freedom Radio. Radio. Embarking on the second hour of the Freedom Files Uncensored radio show this afternoon, Woo broadcasting live on justin.tv slash FFRN. We'll be back live tomorrow afternoon on AmericanFreedomRadio.com, 3 to 5 p.m. Central. Uh, we weren't able to do it live today because of Skype. <laughs> Skype fucked us over. <laughs> you know what I'm noticing? What? You're taking a lot more advantage of the... Uh the uncensoredness than I am. I am. Does that mean that you bite your tongue a lot more on the yes, regular show or yes, that you're I taking do. more advantage right now? I bite my tongue a lot more. Okay. Because, so, see, anybody who's listening to the show knows I'm the, the gung-ho anti-censorship yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, They're all words. I don't give a shit what they are. You, you know? You've been cussing, too. but you Not much, though. I mean, if we did a tally here, you would be much, much, much more I, uh, advanced I'm, than me. I'm winning the cuss fest this yeah, afternoon. Yeah, you're winning the cuss fest. Hard, read, yeah, you're, you're, you're way up there. You know what you're, I got? you're up there at the and, George Carlin hey, level. I'm just down in, here. At, in the know. words <laughs> of uh, the dude. No, I'm George Carlin. You're up here at, uh, at uh, Richard Pryor's level. <laughs> in, in the words of the dude. The dude? Fucking A, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big Lebowski fan. Oh, okay. That's a great movie. In my opinion, that's the best Coen Brothers movie there is. <laughs> and it's, you know, everyone else talks about Fargo or No Country for Old Men. I really didn't care for it. I've never film. seen any of those movies. Okay. But if there's one of the three, I would recommend uh, Big Lebowski. It's dark humor. Mm -hmm. it's, it's funny as hell. What's that about? Um, we'll see uh, the dude, which is played by Jeff Bridges. He's uh -huh. a he's like a no he's like a bowler. <coughs> oh, the bowling one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It has him, John Goodman, um, uh, Julian Moore in it. Uh, a couple others as well. Is that the one with Woody Harrelson? Is Woody Harrelson in there? Is that no, a different no, one? that's Kingpin. Kingpin, okay. That's him in, uh, let's see. Is that uh, another one of those situations where two of the same movie came out at the same time? No, they're, they're totally they're different. Complete, well, I mean, same style. You know how that happens yeah. in Hollywood. You'll get one movie that comes out yeah. and another one just like it. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, bowling is kind of the uh, background thing uh -huh. in Big Lebowski. Uh, the, the main thing in Kingpin is the bowling tournament. You know, mm -hmm. it's all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're two really, I love both movies. But of the two, my favorite is Big Lebowski. But I still have a place in my heart for Kingpin as well. <laughs> All right, going into headlines, we're gonna uh, for the next few minutes, we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, the the hard work that the uh, Census Bureau uh, did. You know, because they you know harassed us for a couple weeks back in April. Remember? Yeah. Fortunately, uh, that helped employ uh, your missus for a little yeah. bit, and and countless millions of other Americans who didn't have anywhere else to go work. Yeah. Oh, and they used that. They used the hell out of that to make it did. look like they still had some jobs. <laughs> See, look at all these jobs that are available. Never mind that they're temporary jobs. I remember reading that shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. How gullible do you think the American people are? Yep. <laughs> I swear. But anyways, the census shows slowing U.S. growth, and it brings forth uh, GOP gains, according to the AP. The Republican-leaning states will gain at least half a dozen House seats thanks to the 2010 census, which found the nation's population growing more slowly than in the past decades, but still shifting to the South and West. The Census Bureau announced uh, yesterday that the nation's population on April 1st was at 308,745,535. Mm. So about... 309 million people, plus yeah. the 12 or so million illegals. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh, up from, uh, see, uh, 281.4 million a decade ago. So it's been a, 
Uh, that's a nice little jump from two hundred eighty-one million to uh, about three hundred and nine million yep. over a decade. A lot of people been having kids out there. <laughs> a lot of fucking going on. A lot of fucking. <laughs> uh, the growth rate for the past decade was nine point seven percent, the lowest since the Great Depression. The nation's population grew by thirteen point two percent from nineteen ninety to two thousand. Michigan was the only state to lose population during the past decade, and Nevada, with a thirty-five percent increase, is the fastest growing state. Hmm. Naturally, well, Michigan is is hurting because the you know they used to be where the auto industry uh, was yeah, in Detroit. this country. <clears throat> I mean, that's it's basically. Uh, a ghost town now in Detroit. I mean, there's nothing left. We're going to, I think we have some more numbers about Detroit coming up in just a little bit, but uh, following each uh, once a decade census, the nation must re uh, appropriate the uh, houses, 435 districts to make them roughly equal in population with each state getting at least one seat. Texas will gain four new house seats. Hmm. Florida will get two uh, gaining uh, one each in Arizona, Georgia, Nevada, South Carolina, Utah, and Washington. Hmm. Ohio and New York will lose two house seats each. Uh, losing one house seat will be uh, Illinois, Iowa, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, Missouri, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Each of them will be losing a house seat. Hmm. And uh, basically, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute, about our situation here in Louisiana. But uh, Florida will now have as many U.S. House members as New York, 27, California will still have uh, 53 seats, and Texas will climb to 35 seats. Uh, states losing political clout may have little recourse to challenge the census numbers. Still, uh, census officials were bracing for a possibility of lawsuits seeking to revise 2010 findings. North Carolina just missed picking up the last House seat, falling short by roughly 15,000 people. Uh, the release of states' uh, proper um, numbers... Uh, the first set of numbers from the 2010 census, beginning in February, the Census Bureau will re release uh, population and uh, race breakdowns uh, to neighborhood levels for states to withdraw congressional boundaries. Uh, Louisiana, Virginia, New Jersey, and Mississippi will be among the first states to receive their redistricting. redistricting. And late February, the uh, 2010 census results are used to distribute more than $400 billion in annual federal aid and will change each state's electoral college vote beginning in the uh, 2012 presidential election. Hmm. So that screws over Louisiana. Yeah. And uh, more on uh, our our state, the Pelican State, Louisiana to lose a congressional seat. This is coming from the AP as well. Louisiana is losing one of its congressional seats. New census data was released today showing that the state's congressional delegation will shrink from seven to six House seats and the 2012 elections. That's because Louisiana's population hasn't grown as quickly as other states. The state has uh, 4.5 million people and grew by only 1.4% over the last decade compared to a national growth rate of 9.7%. State leaders have heard predictions for years that Louisiana would lose a congressional seat and state lawmakers will decide how to redraw the congressional maps. Uh, you know what I say with that? What? One less politician. One less Congress critter. One less critter. I love that. And when you actually break down the math on the losses and the gains, we're gaining three overall in the country. The whole country is getting three brand new Congress critters. No, no, it stays the same. No, it Are you sure? Uh-huh. Let's see. Louisiana, Virginia, New Jersey, Mississippi. Oh, where are they at? Where's the numbers at? I think the number's always Let's see. The loss is they're losing one in Illinois, Iowa, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, Missouri, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. That's eight losses. They're gaining uh, Texas four, Florida two. Uh, one in Arizona, one Georgia, one Nevada, one South Carolina, Utah, and Washington. So they're gaining three more than they're losing. However, <coughs> no, Ohio and New York each lost two. Where'd that go? It's right there at the top. Ohio and New York lose. Oh, okay. Two each. Two each. Okay, I see now, 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 here's how it works. Okay. So there's one now, there is no, there is more no, extra. There, there, I don't think there's a really a gain or anything. There, 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 there would be a well, loss. The one, the one is, is uh, for, uh, I think it's for uh, D.C. itself. Oh, okay. But, but that, that, that Congress critter doesn't get to do anything. Oh, okay. They, don't get, they, they just have a representation for the district. Seems a little strange that it didn't change. Well, know, it, it's not supposed to. Huh. There's always supposed to be, for some reason, I don't know why it's set up this way, 435 con uh, House members. Okay, so that was but done by just, design. But they just, okay. keep, they just keep, you know, every, every census, they move it around. I every see. Every 10 okay. years. So right. we didn't actually lose any any critters, unfortunately. No, we do. We lose. We well, I mean, we didn't lose any overall, numbers. Overall, yeah. Overall, you still have. You're still. I was hoping have, to have fewer critters. No, no, no. Overall, uh, there's still going to have 435. Huh? Yeah, there's still going to be that number two years from now. But 
Louisiana lost one of those. Oh, I so, see. So we have one less person to represent us ah. in the federal government, so that's not a good thing. But that's also one less person to screw us. Yeah, but at Which the means we only have to keep our eyes on, you know, however many six. that are left. Six, yeah. But it, it, <clears throat> it doesn't exactly help us, especially when you have New York and Florida. They each have 27, mm. and uh, Texas has 36, mm. and California has 53. So guess who gets... Uh, more voices screaming for their state. Ah. Say, uh, Florida, New York, California, and Texas, uh, they get top priority on things because mm. they have more peeps. Oh, I see. Exactly. Mm. Uh, one six of the House skips the final lame duck votes. This is mm. coming from the uh, Washington Post. More than 70 House members didn't bother showing up to vote yesterday. They went on a vacation early. Yeah, like, ah, screw this shit. We're out of here. Going skiing. Yeah. Even as the lower chamber wrapped up its uh, final priorities in the uh, lame duck session, lame duck. yeah, lame duck my ass, including a bill on the uh, funding of federal government through uh, March and a measure uh, on health benefits for the 9/11 first responders. I mean, so many so of just them. now getting to that. Well, I mean, the government's been pushing against it. Yeah. Remember, the EPA said, "Oh, the air was safe to breathe." Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And since then, hundreds of first responders have died. Mm-hmm. And this is something they don't talk about in the mainstream media. Oh, no. uh, a good documentary to watch uh, concerning the first responders is uh, the Alex Jones documentary that came out a couple of years ago. Um, let's see, what was it called? Uh, and there's, some, there's so many of them out there, but uh, I, I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. Okay. Whenever it pops into my <laughs> noggin. But it's, it's the one about you know, what happened to the first responders. You know? I mean, the ones that are still alive right now... Um, they're badly sick. They're they're on. Some of them are on oxygen takes. They have a a shitload of medication they're on. I mean, they're suffering, and and most of them that are still alive are may, might even be uh, years or months or weeks away from death. Hmm. And the government has done shit about them. They don't care. They could care less. So that's one of the things that I think. Yeah, the nine eleven chronicles. Okay, yeah, truth, rising. truth rising part one. Yeah, and that was the only one that they come out with so far. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the nine planned ahead. The nine eleven chronicles, truth rising. I would recommend you check that out if you want to know more about the plight and the tragedy of the nine eleven responders. It's it's really sad and heartbreaking. Uh, the number of members missing in action amounts to more than one sixth of the lower chamber and includes many who are retiring or were defeated in the last month's <laughs> midterms. The House held seven uh, votes uh, late Tuesday, including one bill. Uh, that would avert a government shutdown. Uh, more than 80 members were missing from votes held early Tuesday afternoon. 73 were not present to vote for the, uh, the food safety bill. Uh, one member, uh, Representative uh, Stephen Kagan, attempted to vote on the food safety bill, but his vote was not recorded due to an error, <laughs> according to the spokesperson. Kagan later recorded his intent with the uh, clerk of the House, and 75 were missing for the vote on continued funding for federal government. So... <laughs> So as long as, you know, it's the, um, it's not a lame duck Congress. It's a hurry the hell up and get a lot of bad shit done, yeah. Congress, before our time's up. <laughs> it's the, uh, the Cinderella Congress. Mm. Yeah. They have to get home from the ball before midnight. Yeah. <laughs> or the, or the, uh, the carriage turns back into a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just, it's, it, it's pathetic. And scary at the same time how much shit they passed mm-hmm. over the past month. Oh, yeah. The food safety bill. Yeah. Uh, other bills as well that are very police state, um, have a very police state vibe to them. Yeah. I mean, it's... It, I, I would like a list of all of the votes that have been, all of the things, bills and stuff that have been yeah. passed by people who are going out. Yeah. By people who have already been told by the American public, we don't want yes anymore. Exactly. I want to know how much shit they're pushing through right yeah. now. Because that's what the people need to know. We yeah. need to know how many of these people are getting this stuff through after we've told them, no, 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 yeah. you can't do that. Yeah. yeah. I agree. It's like arresting somebody and letting them stay out of jail, and they yeah. can rob a couple of banks until their court date. No, it's just like, say, say for example, you're a big cook. Say you had a restaurant, yeah. you know, Jeff's, uh, Jeff's 24 Grill. <laughs> you had a shitty manager, okay? The guy did a terrible job. He was on the take. He was always uh, harassing your waitresses. Uh, he was always... Uh, shouting out racial slurs at your cooks uh, or whatever, you know, and he was taking money and putting it in his pocket. You fire him, but unfortunately, uh, he still gets to keep his job for another two months. 
Mm-hmm. What do you think he's going to do in that two month period that he knows that you fired him? Oh, exactly. Yeah, you get fired, you're out of the door. You're I mean, gonna you're gonna have the diner burn down. Yeah, he's gonna do some arson shit on you. Yeah. I mean, no. When you fire somebody, you fire them. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah, they should be gone as soon as you're voted out of office. You're done. Yeah. Goodbye. I would much rather be an empty seat. Yeah. Even if you do have to do the transition, yeah. I'd much rather there be an empty seat yeah. than have somebody in there who's yeah. got a vendetta. The moment they get voted out of office... Uh, Pack your bags. Yeah. You're out of here. Yeah. yeah. Don't let the door hit you on your ass. Yeah, be like Survivor, one of your favorite shows. You, know, you put the little thing out and they're out of there. Shut my favorite They don't get to show. hang out, you know? That show sucks. Yeah, yeah they all suck, but, but I mean, something needs to be done. Either, either, if you're voted out, you yeah. can't get stuff pushed through. It just makes no sense. And over the past month of us discussing this i've kind of thought about the idea we've you know us going back and forth have given me an idea hey yeah i think that the current 1100th and 11th congress everything should be suspended Mm -hmm. put on hold or at least only decided upon by people who are still in office yeah but this is what i think instead of instead of swearing in new candidates the the 112th congress in january since stuff has to be done by the end of the year Mm -hmm. let's move it up let's do it say the first december 1st yeah Okay, we have the election the first Tuesday of November uh, and the first Monday of December. That's when the new Congress of... There you that's go. When they it gives them months to get the shit in order. They can do they that. They gives them a couple weeks yep. to clear out your office. Yep. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, they can do it. I mean, it's not impossible. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but, you know, they're not going to do that. They're going to half-ass it. They're going to take their sweet time, but that's one thing that I think needs to change. Yeah. Because, I mean, I guarantee you a lot of things would have ended differently. Probably not. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it all is technically you go back and forth, but it is an illusion. Mm. But I think that a lot of this stuff that the 100th and uh, 11th Congress have pushed might have not been pushed by the 100th and 12th Congress. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. Big maybe. Maybe, but but it, it, it's still the point that, that the principle of the issue of yeah. we fired these assholes or, you know, they didn't get reelected. Yeah. And yeah, it would suck. I mean, because I'm sure there were a few good ones that got voted out. Uh there could have been. And right. I, I could see how the argument could be made the other side. Well, oh, well, you know, what happens if well, something good gets pushed through? You know, you're, you're going to stop the good stuff. Well, I would much rather stop it, one good thing than allow five if it, bad things. If it's good stuff, then the next Congress will push it through. There okay? you go. Yeah. That's just the way it is. It's, yeah. it's supposed to be the will of the people. If the people support a certain uh, new law or bill and it happens to be constitutional, then fine. It doesn't matter. They're going to support it either way. But if it's not then it doesn't matter which Congress it is. They should be against it. But that's unfortunately, it's not how it works. Yes, in the show, uh, Freedom Files Uncensored this afternoon is unofficially brought to you by Sweet Leaf and, uh, of course, uh, Penta Water. Yummy. Yeah, we have, we're drinking a Sweet Leaf green tea, minted <laughs> honey. It's we're what, drinking the residue of it, actually. It's yeah. so good. We want to drink all of it. It's good stuff, though. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you've been looking for an alternative to Snapple or Lipton, Yes, uh, our one viewer. Check it out. Yeah, Sweet Leaf is it's the probably way. Doc. Here, Doc, have one. Yeah, uh, or uh, <laughs> I don't know, probably Chris or uh, or Casey. <laughs> Hi, whoever you are. Maybe it's the maybe. Thank it's, you for tuning in. Tell your friends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this isn't going to be as fun to listen to, you know, because you know there's no. Uh, it'll still be fun to listen to. Yeah. For everyone that's listening to it right now in the future. Ooh. But it was kind of fun watching us at the same time. <laughs> but going back into uh, the show, because we still got about 43 minutes left. Yeah. Uh, White House drafts executive order for indefinite detention. We knew this was coming Mm-mm. from Wall Story. The White House is preparing an executive order on indefinite detention that will provide periodic reviews of evidence against dozens of prisoners at Gitmo, according to several administration officials. The draft order, a version of which was first considered nearly 18 months ago, is expected to be signed by President Obama early in the new year. The order allows for the possibility that detainees from countries like Yemen might be released if circumstances were changed. But the uh, the order establishes indefinite detention as a long-term Obama administration policy and makes it clear that the White House alone will manage a review process for those it chooses to hold without the charge or trial. Hmm. If signed by President Obama, the new order will provide added 
review for detainees designated for long-term detention. The order, which will be drafted jointly by the White House staff and the National Security Council and the White House Council, will offer detainees in the category a minimum review every six months and then more lengthy annual reviews. Uh, detainees will have access to an attorney, uh, to some evidence against them, and the ability to challenge their continued detention. The White House first began work on the executive order in the spring of 2009. An administration official at the time said order was under uh, consideration but had not yet been completed. Uh, civil rights groups, however, uh, opposed the indefinite detention and uh, came out strongly against the possibility of an executive order. Weeks later, the administration official said the White House had decided to work with Congress on indefinite detention rather than through the executive order, but by 2009, the White House had said it would not support legislation because they don't give a fuck for the Constitution or, you know, the right of due process. Lovely. Yeah. So they, they try and I, I thought this. Gitmo was getting shut down. Didn't, yeah. didn't that come out not long ago? Yeah, well... I mean, I, I never really followed it much, and I really don't know what the hell Gitmo is for, but, okay. but I, I remember hearing that Gitmo was getting shut down. Yeah, but to review, President Obama said a lot of sweet things <laughs> oh, when yeah. he was running in 2008. He said he was going to have a transparent government. Yeah. He said he was going to pull our troops out of Iraq. He said he was going to close Gitmo. I think he even went as far as saying he was going to do away with the Patriot Act. I might be wrong about that. Maybe, yeah. that's, just, maybe that's my own little dream here. But uh, he's done a 180 on a lot of things. And if you're a betting person, I would not bet against this executive order ultimately being used against American citizens. Hmm. I mean, remember yesterday, what we were talking about, Eric Holder, he came out on TV basically calling uh, Americans are going to be the new threat. Oh, yeah. Radical Americans are what we're going to have to worry about. Not not, not foreign guys in caves. Yeah, but because people have finally stopped worrying about that because they realize it's bullshit. Yeah. Now they need a new enemy. Well, this, this was always their plan to begin with. Yeah. They just needed the excuse so they could set up this police state through the Patriot Act, the Military Commissions Act, Department of Homeland Security, NORTHCOM, uh, the Serve America Act, uh, Presidential Directive 51, signed by Bush, which will give him dictatorial powers, of course, uh, Obama, his, uh, he did something la at the beginning of the year, his Council of Governors, you know, 10 FEMA regions, you know, and they've been putting all this in place for some time now. Those security cameras at every intersection mm -hmm. aren't there uh, for our benefit. They're there to keep an eye on us <laughs> by Big Brother, all right? And they've been putting each piece of this jigsaw puzzle in place, and now they're about ready to shut the thing on. They're about to hit the, the on switch. Push the button. Mm -hmm. Engage. That's what's about to happen. And yep, they're going to use indefinite detention against Americans. It's coming. Napolitano says the Department of Homeland Security is going to begin battling climate change as a, a homeland security issue. So like we needed another reason to hate <laughs> big sis in the Department of Homeland Security. This is coming from CNS News. At an all-day White House conference last week on, quote-unquote, environmental justice, Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano announced that her department is creating a new task force <laughs> to battle effects on climate change on domestic security operations. Speaking at the first White House Forum on Environmental Justice on Thursday, Napolitano discussed the initial findings of the department's recently created Climate Change and Adaption Task Force, the Green Police. Yeah. Napolitano explained that the task force was charged with identifying and assessing the impact that climate change would have on the missions and operations of the <laughs> Department of Homeland Security. Really? Is it, it, this is what we're spending money on? Yep. To determine whether or not it's going to get really, really hot at the Department of Homeland Security? Is that what they're basically trying yeah. to say here? Well, what they're doing is... And environmental justice just sounds like, like, like one of these PETA organizations, these extreme yeah. you know, green terrorists. Yep. You know? Yep. Wow. Well, it's all part of the it's all part so of the DHS plan. DHS will become uh, eco-terrorism now. It's all part of the plan. <laughs> it's all part of their agenda. Wow. Yeah, they've been pushing the global warming scam for years now, thanks to Al Gore, Man Bear Pig, the snake oil salesman of the 21st century. Yeah, First, but to say it has anything to do with Homeland Security is just ridiculous. I know. It's not a security this flaw. Is, this is, what, they think aliens are going to come in through the, uh, the hole in the ozone layer? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah, what the hell? Exactly. And here's, here's the reason why they're going to push this, okay? Here's a perfect example. Say, say you live in a city where they have recycling, 
At, at the moment, it's, it's voluntary. Yeah. But you choose not to recycle. Hmm. Your choice. A couple years later, the Department of Homeland Security uh, creates this task force to fight climate change. Now, one of the ways you fight climate change is by, quote-unquote, recycling. Yeah. If you're not recycling... control climate change. If you're not recycling, then in the eyes of the Department of Homeland Security, what are you? One word would describe you in the eyes of the Department uh, of Homeland Security. Terrorist? Ding, ding, ding. I just don't get that. It has nothing to do with security, though. I mean, None of this I, has on anything. One hand, I guess I can look at it as at least they're not opening another branch of government to go cover this. At least they're putting it all in one yeah, little pocket. Well, well, the problem but is, they're still going to spend money on this task force. Well, they don't have they're to. still going to waste time on it. Well, this is what they do. They don't have to open. Bra- they open sub branches. OK, mm. they, they spread out like the plague. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's, so that's what they're going to do. That's going to how they're going to give us the illusion of a smaller government, yeah. fewer organizations with more jobs. Yeah. Uh, like the DHS. It's huge. It covers everything. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's, but it's, in, as an entity, it's just one entity. Yeah. You know, we're a small government. We only have one entity. Yeah. You know, the Department of Homeland Security. Yeah. They happen to have a cabinet seat, you yeah. know, along with the Secretary of State and Defense and whatnot. Wow. But I mean, no, this is what happens. They create one of these entities. I mean, look, look back when Jagger Hoover... Uh, created the FBI. It wasn't as large as it is today. Mm. The CIA came out of the OSS. You know, the Skull and Bonesman, you know, grew, you know, blew that up. Look what happened with the uh, Federal Reserve, the IRS, the DEA. Yeah. They all start out small, yeah. but then they quickly expand and, you know, take more mm. control and power. I mean, FCC, perfect example. The oh, FCC, those fucktards. <laughs> okay, they didn't originally start out the way they are now. That wasn't their original intention. Okay, but look what they've become. Hmm? I mean, they, they, they control radio and television. They'll come after you if you do something, if you say something on the air, or you show some, so show some titties, <laughs> you know, in the Super Bowl. Can't do that. And now, look what they, as of yesterday, they're, they're going after the Internet. Yep. Another prime example of these bureaucracies expanding themselves because they have no choice. And what's really fucked up about it is they're going to the extreme of actually moving away from their own governing bodies. Yeah. The FCC is violating everything that the Congress themselves is telling them to do. Yeah. You're not going to do this. Well, screw well, you. I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, the problem is... They've, they've branched out from into their own little you know, entity here. The truth is, for some time now, the bureaucracy is its own power. Yeah. They don't well, answer... Now we've got a you know, blatant... You know, evidence of this. Yes, exactly. And in several instances, yeah. they don't answer to the government anymore. Yeah. Okay, the president, when he gets elected to office, he gets the spoils of war, and he can appoint his lackeys to these positions. Mm-hmm. But in the end, the bureaucracy is what really runs the show. Mm-hmm. The Congress, sadly, has been rendered obsolete. I mean, the Congress should s- decide whether or not the SEC has the authority to go in and take over the internet and regulate it. Exactly. But they're going past Congress. Yeah. The DEA goes after marijuana and other drugs. Mm-hmm. Congress doesn't determine that. Yeah. The DEA does. Oh, the DEA already said, if you pass laws allowing marijuana, we're still going yeah. after them. Yeah, Eric Holder threatened California with that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. This is a group of basically children who are disobeying their parents. Wow. Is really what it's coming down to. And they have no concept for the Constitution. No, because they're not if, constitutional. They're if, not part of the government. No. They don't have to do that. They're, 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 a, they're a twisted version of the government. Yeah. They're, the government's becoming privatized is what it really comes down to now. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and oh. it doesn't matter what a state does, okay? If a state decides they want to legalize marijuana or gay marriage or whatever, mm-hmm. The government will step in and they'll say, no, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Despite the fact that... Or even worse, entities outside of the government. Yeah. Well, despite the fact that the state governments have a right under the Ninth and Tenth Amendments of the Constitution, Bill writes, to do that. Yeah. You'll have the DEA step in and say, no, you cannot legalize marijuana in your state. You can't do this or that because might makes right and we represent the federal government. Yeah. And the truth is, they're not, they're not what the federal government is supposed to be. Yeah. The federal government is supposed to complement the state governments. Yeah. Not, not you know, bash them into the ground, not bully them. Yeah. And that's the problem. The, the, state, the federal government started out as a normal guy. Mm. You know, it was okay. Not, I mean, people didn't like him. They didn't hate him. He was okay. But then he decided, hey, 
you know, I'm going to start taking steroids, i.e. bureaucracy. I'm going to start building up my bureaucracy. Yeah. And that's what happened. So he became a roid head. Like, oh, look after my muscles. And you have everybody else around him who's no match to him. You know, they don't take steroids. They work out. You know, they're in decent shape. But yeah. and, but he walks up to somebody and say, hey, I'm the federal government, and I will do, tell you to do what I say to do. And then the guy's like, but wait a minute. You know, I, I'm supposed to be allowed to do whatever I want to do. And he's like, tough shit. <laughs> I'm going to tell you not to have marijuana. Yeah. I don't yeah. know where I was going with that Jamaican-Australian accent. <laughs> that was weird. But but I can see how the DA, uh, not DHS, but um, D, B, 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 DEA can have that kind of power. They've got a huge task force behind them. They've got police but, officers behind them. But how the hell does the FCC think that they can go around and tell people what to do when they're not being given any actual permission to do it? Because they have the power to, to carry out red tape, licenses, uh, fines, and fees. For and, existing and things. if you refuse, then because they're a bureaucratic entity, they can get another one of the bureaucratic entities like the FBI or uh, DHS or even local police to go in and do something to you. Yeah, see, that, that's what I'm looking for is, is it, I'm waiting to see how exactly this, this, this dickhead pr- plans on doing it. Yeah. How do you plan on making people do something when you have nobody backing you? How do you plan on telling the Internet you have to do what we say when they have no jurisdiction over the Internet? Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's should, like a police officer well, trying to like, go to another country well, and saying, hey, you're going to follow my laws. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, going back to the DEA for a second, okay, they didn't start off with power and authority. They, they festered and grew their power. Yeah, I know, but now they've basically. got it. I can see them pushing it because they've got because, agents. Because they have the muscle. The FCC doesn't have any muscle, though. The FCC has no agents. They, How are they going to do it? They, they do have agents, but what they'll do is they go about other means. They, they, they send in people you know, with badges and guns mm-hmm. you know, as their foot soldiers to shut you down. Mm. They so they're going to find basically loopholes to get their hands on the Internet. Yeah. I mean, you know, we cover any transmission, and because it's Wi-Fi, we yeah. can get you. And the government itself now has the power to regulate and cut down the, you know, access to the internet. If there's sites out there they don't want you to go to, like, yeah. like for example, FreedomFiles.us, AmericanFreedomRadio.com, Justin.tv, are the Drudge Report. Yeah. If or they, more recently, WikiLeaks. Yeah. They'll shut it down. They'll Which say, they have. bam, they'll block you, just like they do in China. Mm. You know, there's a lot of sites that the Chinese people that are lucky to have internet access. Don't get to check out because their government has a quote unquote cyber great wall. Oh, even in certain other countries that aren't even considered horrible. Uh, I believe I've seen that in Canada, you cannot watch South Park online. I, I think it was Canada. I've seen that in well, some countries, I, there's people bitching that they can't watch South Park online. I think a lot of that in is, their it's, country. It's not a government issue, it's a corporation issue. It's that is uh, it? it's paramount. Uh, I think there's some licensing agreement yeah. or some crap. I but don't know the how technology it, and the, the, yeah. the, the thing, it's being done already. Yeah. So I mean, that just shows how you but, know, frightening but, this but is. That, that, that aspect is not being controlled by any government. This, this is going not to be... Not that we know of. Yeah, not, not that we know of. But at the same time, they're talking about sending in this bureaucrat, bureaucratic entity like the FCC yeah. and tell you what you can and cannot do over the Internet. Yeah. If, it, if you have a you know, radio talk show and it's saying anti-government stuff yeah. on a daily basis like our show does, um, they, they could... Theoretically, shut us down. Oh, very much so. And what's even more frightening is they don't even have to go that far w- yeah. to do damage. They can go to to smaller uh, aspects here by just they're, they're there to regulate the internet, so they could very easily go into Wikipedia and start changing some entries. Yeah. They can go into you know Encyclopedia Britannica and start changing yeah. some entries. You know, I've already started seeing stuff like that on Wikipedia. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the government, yeah. but it just shows how easy it is to change history yeah. by just changing the data. Nobody and, checks. Nobody fact checks. Nobody looks for these references. And that's one of the reasons why I support having still having printed documents. Yeah, we had a story not long ago about them jump, uh, a jumping the books for e-books yeah, in a library. Houston, there was a library in Houston. Yeah, I didn't really see your point there. I was thinking, you know what? The books are still you know on e-books and, you know. The yeah. thing I'm more pissed about is them, you know, opening a coffee shop in there. But now I kind of see your point. This is a situation, especially in that school, where if something's wrong in the story, in the book, in the whatever it is on their computer, yeah. they have no way of fact checking that. Yeah. And I've already run into things like that on, on you know, Wikipedia entries looking up, you yeah. know, things that I've always known about, you know, the history of whatever I look up all of a sudden aren't in that entry anymore. Yeah. It's something else. Mm-hmm. Real big thing lately has been uh, Christmas stories. Yeah. I've looked up to brush up on my history of the Christmas stuff every now and then. Yeah. And I'm seeing more and more that the histories of Christmas are going away and being replaced with Christian. Now, all of a sudden, Santa was created by Christians. Yeah. 
you know, you have to dig real deep to find anything about the Scandinavian roots, you mm-hmm. know, and, and it doesn't stop well, there. The, I'm Scan- sure. the Scandinavian, the Druid, yeah. and the Roman roots. Yeah, I mean, all of these roots are, are either completely gone or they're buried deep beneath all of this, you know, modernized wow. information. Oh, we're going to put in that, that the Christians started this. Yeah, and that's, and that's what's sad. Most Christians don't realize the truth about Christmas. Yeah. All of their holidays. It has nothing to do with Jesus. All of their holidays Absolutely are that way. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Technically, they've, they've proven that Jesus, if he, there was a real Jesus, he would have probably been born in the springtime. Yeah. Not December 25th. Yeah. And you have, I saw some guy driving around and, you know, in the back of his car, he wrote, happy birth, Jesus' birthday is coming up on December 20th. Yeah. Something about that. Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm like, dude, <laughs> whatever. I just find it funny that it just so happens that his birth falls right around uh, winter solstice. Yeah. A celebration that had already existed yep. prior to Christianity. Exactly. Same thing goes for what the spring equinox mm-hmm. is. Yeah. You know the uh, Easter and and uh, uh, what was the other one? There's another Sa- Christian. Saturnal. Well, oh no, uh, Samhain. Yeah. Falls right around Halloween, which yep. as much as Christians hate to admit it, and no one knows, but Christianity created what Halloween is today. Yep. Yeah. Right and up. they all fall around pre-existing ancient beliefs. Yeah, from other religions. From other religions. They've ripped them off. Well, well they, did, they did this intentionally. Yeah. Because they and had, now they're doing they it to, cyberly. They had to uh, acclimate, you know, new, yeah. new followers. Yeah. And they it had, worked. They had to appeal. When, when, the, when the Catholic Church came into power in Rome, mm-hmm. uh, they had to appeal to all the quote-unquote pagans yeah. that still worship Jupiter and Mars and Saturn and all the other gods. Yeah. So they started integrating. Yeah. Like Christmas was originally uh, see Saturnalia, yeah. which was the celebration and worship of the god Saturn, i.e. Poseidon. Mm-hmm. I think it's... No, no, no. no. Nep- Saturn is... Yeah, Neptune's Poseidon. Saturn was the god of, uh, I believe, the hearth or... Um, the uh, land, something of, something okay, of that okay, nature. Okay, my bad, my bad. But the point was, it was they were Saturn worshippers to yeah. begin with. And if you look at at what Christians have done, is they've taken the look God of, of the harvest and planet. They've taken Saturn's look, his physique that we see in artwork and and uh, sculptures that still exist mm-hmm. that you know survived the centuries, and he looks an awfully lot like a big fat guy with a white beard. Yeah, that's all they did. Oh yeah, they just they just gave the guy a red suit. Uh, put a few extra pounds on him, and that's here in America. Okay, yeah. in other countries he's not fat. Yeah, Santa Claus. I mean, yeah. I think in England he's a thin guy. Yeah. So I mean, it's just a matter of perspective. I mean, things have constantly been changing yeah. over the. Uh, and now it's starting to happen online. I think. But, I think there's a push to yeah. to acclimate the new generation yeah. and just completely erase this history. But, oh, people aren't going to yeah. check up on that. We'll take it out. Yeah. But that's the problem, though. You you have people uh, going in. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're broadcasting live on Justin.tv, Dad. Poke your head in there. Let yes, everybody see your pretty face. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie Burns, the host of the Cannabis Corner, Dad, uh, coming up. Uh, you can join us if you want. Uh, he's going to get some coffee first. We're doing an uncensored show today because, uh, as uh, we're, we're, we've been explaining all afternoon, uh, Skype is down, you know, which is how we, we do our show. And so we're, we're doing a show anyways uh, for posterity. Yeah. But... Uh, so this is going to be on YouTube. So a lot of people that are listening right now are, are listening to it in the future. Yeah. Oh, you're saying you, nobody out there could be actually listening. Right there now. are people. You can actually. You are. There are people listening via Justin.tv oh. slash FFRN or Justin.tv account. But most people that are going to be listening in the, you know, on YouTube. Well, obviously. Will be later. Yeah. Will be later on. Oh. But uh, this is real for them, though, that dial into Yeah, those, those that are, that are viewing it. Yeah. yeah, our one viewer right here. Yeah, our one, our one <laughs> viewer. Oh, cool. We don't, we don't pro- see, our problem is we don't promote Justin.tv enough. Yeah. Because we, we go back and forth on whether or not we want to hassle with doing the live web show. But for a days like today, when we have yeah. no choice, yeah. it's handy. It's very handy. Well, I said people are listening idea. to us in the future on yeah. YouTube right now. Yeah. Hello from the past. Yes. Hello. Program is futuristic. <laughs> and speaking of the past, like we were talking about, I don't have a problem with Christians celebrating Christmas or any other holiday, mm-hmm. but you have to recognize that its origins are not Christian. And stop trying to erase the origins, yeah. which it seems to be a very, it's a very frightening movement because if they can do that to, yeah. to for for religious sake, and, what can they do? And, you know, they don't have to start reprinting books in Texas. Look, they can just change the history. Look on what Wikipedia. the Nazis did in Germany. Yeah. They burned countless books and they tried to purge the existence. Of the Jews. Yeah, and now we don't even have to burn the books. Anything, we just change the book. Anything that was written by a Jew, anything that was done by a Jew, by you know, art, poetry, books, literature, science, mm-hmm. it was erased from their 
That was their plan yeah. mm-hmm. for their thousand year Reich. There were going to be no more anything Jewish was, you know, bye bye. Yeah. And also, Jeff, you made a good point about them changing things, but yeah. also when they rewrite the books. There's a lot of things in history that are left out. They just don't reprint them. Yeah, and the, you can see you can see a lot of that. I mean, uh, yeah. in this in the last three or four decades, if you look at the school books and stuff, there's a lot of the material that just didn't show back up. And yep. it's their way of censoring out certain things just by omission. Yeah, you know, we don't have to change nothing. We'll just leave it out. That's and true. A lot of that happens. That's the reality we live in. And um, speaking of. Uh, the reality, the sadness, uh, going back into the government. Uh-oh. Yeah. So it's one depressing co- topic, religion, <laughs> to another one, yeah. the government. Uh, government liabilities rose $2 trillion in the fiscal year of 2010. This is coming from Reuters. Uh, the U.S. government fell deeper into the red in the fiscal 2010 with net liabilities swelling more than $2 trillion as uh, commitments on government debt and federal benefits rose, the U.S. Treasury report showed yesterday. The financial report of the United States, which applies corporate style, uh, see, um, what is that? I, ACRO, was it? Um, the accounting methods to Washington showed that the government's liabilities uh, exceeded assets by $13.473 trillion. That compared with the $11.456 trillion gap a year earlier. Unlike the normal measurement of government intake of receipts against cash outlays, uh, accounting measures such as interest on the debt and federal benefits payable when they are incurred, not when the funds are actually dispersed. The government's uh, net operating cost or deficit report grew to $2.080 trillion for the year ended uh, around September 30th from uh, $1.253 trillion. Uh, the prior year as spending liabilities increased for social programs. Uh, actual and anticipated revenues were roughly unchanged. Uh, the cash uh, budget deficit uh, narrow, uh, narrowed in physical 2010 to uh, see about $1.3 trillion. That is from uh, see $1.4 trillion in 2009, so it went down a little bit. Hmm. But the uh, $858 billion tax cut extension package enacted last week is expected to keep the deficit well above the $1 trillion mark for another year. Ah, joy. Yay for us. And no attempts to stop spending. No, I mean, no. my God, y'all had to spend a, a trillion and a half more since last year. Mm-hmm. You know what the you know the staggering statistic I heard today? You know, although gold has gone up over twenty five percent in the last year, you know what one future that you could have invested in and made more money than more money than a gold return would have been? Hmm. Food. Yeah. Oh god. Food. Yes. Food yeah. went they up said f- food futures, more people have made more money this year on food futures than they did on gold. Now that's an assault on the citizens of the United States. Oh, yeah. At this point, corn is gold. That's I mean, crazy. Corn is, is ridiculous. They're using it for so many things. I saw a news article not long yeah. ago where uh, they listed all the crap that they did with corn. Yeah. And it, it was ridiculous. Was Every that, farmer was using it. Yeah, the fuel is what drove yeah, the Yeah, they're using up. it for the yeah. fuel. They're yeah. using it to Ethanol. feed the cows, which yeah. is why the, the uh, milk price is going up, which right. first thing I'm screaming is stop feeding them the fucking corn and, and give, them already, some, yeah. so give them some grass. Well, exactly. Exactly. Grass is free. They've exactly. already proven, too, that the corn's <clears throat> bad for them. Yeah, but I mean, there was this yeah. farmer bitching, you know, oh, I'm not making enough money. I got to start raising the price of, uh, because the cost of corn is more expensive. Yeah. Well, feed them some grass. Put them out in the pasture. Put them in the pasture yeah. like every other cow in the world. Yeah, cows are supposed to eat grass, They're not corn. To. This guy had a bunch of cows okay. in factories okay. eating corn. Let's think ridiculous. about this for Let's think about this for a moment. If a cow was supposed to eat fucking corn, <laughs> wouldn't it have a long neck like a giraffe? You have to be able to lean up the stocks. And that's true. That's true. No, or, that's or, not the way it's designed. No. Yeah. Or, wait, or somehow to wait, some way to climb up. I'm surprised or, they can even eat it. Or, or maybe, maybe. How do they actually, eat it? Yeah. It's actually. Are they making like a corn meal out a, of it? If a cow eats the stalks before the corn's formed, I mean, while the stalks are growing, it can actually kill him. Yeah. You know, because he can't. Well, see, he doesn't I, have the digestive. Yeah, yeah I didn't think they could even chew something yeah. as hard as corn. Yeah. yeah. I mean, chickens can't. You know, they have to like put in rocks and stuff to yeah. do that. Yeah. Do they do the same to to, to cows? I think cows. Do, I, I, or are they grinding it up into yeah. like a, a powder? They grind it. Yeah. I think uh, okay. I think I think cows do eat rocks. Yeah. I mean, they. To, uh, they they need to be stomachs. feeding them some some ra- uh, grass and stop bitching about the cost of corn. Yeah. So that my my gallon of milk doesn't cost five dollars. No, I'll so tell you something. Grass-fed beef is a lot better for you sure than corn-fed. Yeah. 
Uh, the corn and fat's bigger. You and get bigger beef out of it. And it's healthier for the cows. You know, the cow, yeah. a cow's a ruminant type animal. You know, they got several stomachs, you know, and they mm. each, all that food goes through different stages in there and all. And that's why they can eat grass is because each stage is sort of a breakdown stage mm. to the next one, which allows it to keep on passing through. You know, you're talking about them chewing their cud and stuff, you know. Yeah. That's their regurgitated, nu- you know, oh, okay. nutrient stuff. They And that's what they're doing. They're chewing that regurgitant, you know, that's huh. come up after the. But, that's disgusting, uh, but cool. that's, yeah. But that's why they can. Uh, but that's why they're best fed on grass because corn. You know, it doesn't take that four chamber process to, you know, to run through their system like grass does. Yeah, and it's just not good for them. No, they've, no. they've proven that, and it's not good for us to eat the beef that comes from it. And obviously, it's too expensive. Now, well, this, first of all, they just need to get rid of that ethanol anyway. It's yeah. a, it's a waste. But if they are going to keep using corn and ethanol, then stop using corn for cows. Mm-hmm. Problem solved. Yeah. Yeah. I it's guess cheaper today, to use grass. Ethanol doesn't work either. Yeah. Corn ethanol is, is terrible. Oh, it's terrible. The gas and mileage is ridiculous. Well, what they the what they have to the chemical additive that they have to put with the ethanol to make it work yeah. is one of the biggest environmental nightmares of mm-hmm. all time. It it is what's responsible for this uh, dead zone you're seeing outside of the Gulf. Uh, as the Mississippi um, spills It's not the, the only thing. No, no, yeah. no. Uh, maybe, maybe the no. millions of gallons of uh, oil in Corexi in the Gulf well, of Mexico. That might have something to do with that it. That might help, might also well, actually, be a factor. Though, actually, though, the ecological damage from the mouth of, where the mouth of Mississippi spreads out in either direction from the farmlands come all along the Mississippi is actually worse than what the BP spill was. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Well, but it, nobody, it nobody, all factors in together. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's going to, it's, no. it's bad either way, but yeah. nobody really looks at that because it's a trickle effect. Yeah. But, but it is, I mean, there's light, there's, it's devoid of life there. You yeah. Know? yeah. So it's horrible. Yeah, speaking of ethanol and, uh, you know, this these green cars, okay? Oh, yeah. You know, there's been a lot of to do about the, you know, coming Chevy Volt. A lot of people have been, ooh, this is going to be the car of the year. This, it's won a couple awards already. It hasn't even made it onto the market yet. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, I, I've been interested in this for uh, since it first, the first concept design. The first concept uh, model of the Volt looks cool looking, mm-hmm. but then they the, the, the one they're coming out with, the one they went with is really shitty looking. Yeah, I don't know what and it I, is. I guess, I guess the reason why they're going with that design is so they can put all the equipment and all the, all the other junk in there. So... I don't know. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, there does seem to be a push to make any supposed, you know, environmentally friendly or just economical car ugly. Yeah. You know, pretty cars are, the, you know, gas guzzlers. The apparently. concept actually looked kind of cool. Yeah. It had a cool look to it, a unique look to it, but then they went with a the, the shitty sedan look yeah. and it looks like crap. But anyways, uh hybrid, hybrid, the Chevy Volt gets average mileage for a hybrid consumer reports. Uh, with the Chevy Volt collecting awards at a dizzying pace. Buying awards. Yeah, a bunch of bullshit awards. The extended range electric car or hybrid plus warrants a closer look to see if it truly lives up to the hype. And most things don't live up to hype. No. The truth. And That's the, why they're hyped. Yeah, the most commonly asked question about the Volt are uh, what is it like compared with a hybrid and how far can it go before needing a recharge and what sort of energy use or fuel economy do you actually get? Since the Volt runs on a battery power for just 30 to 40 minutes, any mile per uh, gallon figure is meaningless without knowing the length of your trip and whether you recharge the battery along the way. Any cost associated with running a Volt will depend on the price of the electric power in your area. Mm-hmm. And it's going to jack up the price of electric in your area, I guarantee it. Of course it is, because more you know, you're going to have it's going to add to your electric bill. Mm-hmm. That's not going to help. And it. they're already starting to put in these these electric gas pumps, basically these electric pumps. Yeah. You know, GE's pushing them. Well, I can, you know, here's my vision. A charging station. My vision is these cars, the electric cars, going down the highway that have windmills. <laughs> going down the highway that'll work and they transmit power to these cars through microwave transmission there you go you know yeah. they don't even have to stop as long as you're <laughs> along that highway you got power for free yeah. that's an idea uh the vault uses its battery power up front running all electric until the battery is uh depleted and then using the gasoline engine to generate power to run it further gm initially claimed a 40 mile all electric range but recently um, you know, moderated that to uh, between 25 and 50 miles. Depending on uh, how much crap you're running. Exactly. Uh, consumer reports typically got between 29 and 34 miles while when running the electricity alone. So yeah. uh, that seems a little off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of the uh, electric car makers, though, his his car go about three or 400 miles, and he, he claims it'll do zero yeah, to we'll, 60 real quick. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Hold that thought. 
Uh, once the uh, battery is depleted in the vault and the car is essentially using only gasoline as fuel, uh, Consumer Reports averaged it was about 30 miles a gallon overall in the mixed driving. While 30 miles a gallon is good in general, it's no better than a conventional small sedan or subcompact. Mm -hmm. And the price tag for uh, your <coughs> very own Chevy Volt is going to be between what, Jeff? Forty-one thousand and five to forty-five thousand dollars. It's ridiculous how high these things get. I know. That was it's a small price to pay to save the planet. Yeah. The one I was just telling you about, that was his drawback, is because he had to sell the car for hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, if you remember, that the Tesla? if you remember, uh, yeah, maybe the Tesla. The Tesla isn't yeah. that the one that was put out by uh, Al Gore? The Tesla? No, no, that wasn't Tesla. That was uh, what was his his. This is okay, but yeah, I have heard about the Tesla, but yeah, it's got it a ridiculous price tag. It yeah. looks like a sports car, though. Yeah, that's yeah. The, that's it is a sports car. Yeah. Uh, Al Gore's company, his sports, it's a sports company, sports yeah. car, uh, which he got a couple million dollars from our government, from I .e. us, we the people. Um, his sports, his electric power sports cars, they're supposed to save the planet. Uh, bear in mind, I just said sports car a couple of times, just to make the point that these aren't family cars. No. Right. They're sports cars, and the price tag for those is about 90, 100 grand. Yeah, too so, expensive. Yeah, exactly. Way expensive. Way expensive. But back in the 90s. And I mean, if you look at the forty-five or $50,000, you're going to spend more yeah. than that price you just quoted for the other one. Uh -huh. You can buy a lot of fuel for $50,000, yeah. you know. And there was a documentary that came out a couple of years ago about the, um, uh, about, uh, it's called, uh, about how the GM killed the electric car. Uh, you go ahead and Google that real quick. Jeff. Fisker is the name of the yeah, uh, that's, Al Gore. Al that's Gore Al Gore's car. company. Whisker? Yeah. Fisker. Oh, yeah. Fisker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but there was an electric car that came out in the 90s, okay? <clears throat> it was perfect, okay? It, it ran great. They, they gave out a couple as demos, you know, for people to try. It was perfect. It, it was too perfect. GM recalled those from the, the, the test uh, subjects who each got one, and they scrapped them. Mm. All those cars. And they were cheap. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they were cheap, but they... Cheaper. This was back in the 90s, okay? Yeah. Well, they had electric cars back at the turn of the yeah. last century. Yeah. It was called Who Killed the Electric Car? It's a great documentary. It's mm. very eye-opening. But this was, this was back in the 90s. Yeah. Should we do a... Like a commercial for the no, 1787 no, flag? No, we're about, we're, we're about done. We're about done. We got 10 minutes left in the uh, uncensored episode of the Freedom Files radio fuck show. Yeah. What happened to Skype? Uh, it's, it's down. It's down all over the country. Really? 80 mi million people weren't able to use Skype today, Wednesday, December 22nd, 2020. Oh, yeah. We should have covered that in the headlines. Wow. We just did. We just did. <laughs> I just did. That's how good I am. We're probably the only know. ones that covered it. And now, now Jeff is testing Skype once again just to see if it's still down. Because the other shows on American Freedom Radio uh, depend on Skype. They've been down all day. Yeah, or? they appear to be down. Yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, still down. But, you know, that didn't stop us from doing a radio show. That's well, right. It'll I, be delayed, but, yeah, it's still a show. Yeah, it's going to be up on YouTube. Consider this voice tracked. You know, yeah. It, it's perfectly acceptable in terrestrial yeah. radio. So Exactly. So plenty. We went and over, satellite radio. We and, we, and we don't have to worry about cussing, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. Well, we, unless, you know, AFR wants to re-air it. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. We just have to go bleep. Yeah, sorry, Danny. You're going to have to do a lot of editing. <laughs> but anyway. Son of a bleep and you know what. -ins. But hopefully Skype will be back up this evening. I don't know if they might be doing some maintenance or maybe they got attacked by a hacker or something. I don't know. <laughs> or the FCC. Or who knows. Mm -hmm. FCC didn't want to, you know, them getting away with not giving them any money. Yeah, because a lot of radio shows on the Internet depend on Skype to uh, air their broadcasts. Yeah. Uh, but uh, hopefully, if Skype Nothing is back up, we can call in and go on the air. I don't think they, yeah. I don't think at at AFR. I don't think they have to have Skype. We just need Skype to get them. I know. So I we know, could be, we could set up a, a phone system yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, we could if I we mean, had to. If we had to, but it would sound like shit. I think so. Oprah yeah. needs wouldn't the be any Skype, worse. So. But tomorrow afternoon, we got a great day. Oh, is there an Oprah episode on? Well, Maybe that's why it's down. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's enough about Oprah. Who gives a fuck about Oprah? Okay, tomorrow, big show on Freedom Files. We'll be back live. Hopefully tomorrow afternoon, three to five Central. Uh, December 23rd, 2010, Festivus. 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 Of us. That's right. Festivus is happening tomorrow afternoon on the Freedom Files radio show. The first hour, 3 o'clock Central, will be joined by Bob Chapman, the international forecaster is his, is, uh, his name, his alias. His website, of course, is theinternationalforecaster.com. And in the 4 o'clock hour, we will be joined once again by Carrie Burns, the host of the Cannabis Corner. And we're going to be doing a special Festivus edition in the four o'clock hour, and what that's going to be 
dad is each of us are going to have our airing of grievances. Woo-hoo. Oh, wonderful. We're each going to take... It's too bad that can't be uncensored. For <laughs> your 2010 airing of grievances. So whatever... We, we should videotape that whatever, one. Whatever's pissed you off in 2010... Yes. Just make sure you have a list of it. Okay, let's videotape that too. Well, well we we might. we should for just for posterity. Uh, that's that's today's that's <laughs> the word of the day. Yeah, on Freedom Files. No, I don't know if that would be the word of the day mm. on the Freedom Files Uncensored show. <laughs> I think uh, shit or fuck might be. Mm. Uh, anyways, mm. uh, for uh, those of you who uh, listen to the shit show, shit happens, you know. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who have who are are listening to the. Uh, Uncensored edition. I uh, thank you all for taking the time to listen to us. Uh, normally, we uh, we're a lot more uh, clean. We still cuss on, but there's certain words we don't say. On and James was dirtier than I am. I'd just like to say, I won. Yeah, I got James he won. He, I'm, 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 I'm the big anti FCC. You know? We got in this big massive on air fight not long ago about yeah. me saying fuck, yeah. and here he is. Boy, he let it go. The today. fuckmeister da-da-da. himself. Yeah. That's your new nickname, fuckmeister. Adrian. Bravo, good for you, James. <laughs> Fight the power. <laughs> Talk about coming out now. You know? <laughs> no, but we had this conversation uh, what, at the top of the 4 o'clock hour, didn't we? Yeah. You know, it's not that I don't like cussing. It's just that I, I bite my tongue a lot. You bend over a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if you notice, a lot of times when I'm pausing, I'm going, oh, and, you yeah. know. Oh, yeah, I can see you biting your lip. Because I'm, I'm mad about something, but I, I know that I can't say a certain word. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just don't care. I'll say it if I have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I'll, then I'll complain later. Like, where, Jeff, where, where, where? Jeff, don't say that the SEC is going to get us. Yeah. I mean, I no, they're going to get us anyway. Yeah, they're they're going to take over the internet yeah, soon. They're, they're gonna May fuck as well us do while we can. They're going to fuck us no matter what. Yeah. But, I'm, you know, I'm waiting for them to abolish YouTube. But yeah. as, as long as we still do the show. At the very on, least, it'll become a pay service. Yeah, but as long as we still do the show on American Freedom Radio and on any AM, FM station out there, mm. we are going to be, not for not because we're scared of the FCC, but because we, we don't, don't want to hurt the affiliates. We yeah. don't want to hurt our network. We don't want to hurt the AM. F, we don't want them to get retaliation. Yeah. That's the reason why we do it. And yeah, not because we're scared. Yeah. It's because we know what the FCC is capable of. Yeah. yeah. Evil, Come on, bring it on, FCC. Evil, there you go. Get us. Evil bastards. Come and get me, bitches. We'll put you in your place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, be sure and check us out online, freedomfiles.us. From there, you can join us at Facebook, rtr.org, and at our YouTube channel, youtube.com, freedomfiles.us. Actually, Freedom Files US is our, our YouTube channel. Yeah. And uh, we also have a channel for Cannabis Corner, don't we? Yes, yes sir, cannabiscorner.us. And that's coming yeah. very soon. The Cannabis Corner dot US, our yeah. Cannabis Corner dot US. A little spoiler for you: mm. it's coming soon, soon, very soon, very, very soon. But you can soon. you can become part of. See, there's there's Dad, host of the Cannabis Corner. Hi there, Justin TV webcam. But much uh, like the God of premature ejaculation, it's coming you, soon. Ooh. You can you can subscribe to Freedom Files via Freedom Files US at YouTube dot com. You can also subscribe to the Cannabis Corner with Carrie Burns at Cannabis Corner. That's the channel for the uh, for YouTube. YouTube, yeah. and you can join Cannabis Corner, the Cannabis Corner with Carrie Burns, on Facebook as well. So isn't that special? Everywhere. We are everywhere, and every now and then on Justin TV. Yeah, although and, it's easier to view us yeah. on Freedom Post. In the words of Johnny Cash, we've been well. They, no, he's been everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. We are. We are everywhere. We haven't been everywhere. You can't escape. We're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah, but. We're, we're getting out there. This is in your face. <laughs> exactly. And uh, we have a lot we're going to go over with Bob Chapman. I mean, I'm a, we're going to probably talk about a little bit about uh, the North Korea, South Korea, that, you know, we were basically hours away from World War Three from the that other, little standoff. The other day, yeah. And a lot of shit has really gone down the past couple of days. And we're definitely going to get his thoughts about it tomorrow afternoon during the 3 o'clock hour central of the Freedom Files radio show live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com if Skype's working. Yeah. <laughs> they claim that they're going to be back up sometime within hours today. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, something we normally don't get to do because we're always a uh, time constraint on the radio show. Uh, final thoughts, gentlemen. Uh, Carrie. I'm just sad that Skype's down and all the people that depended on that today. They, you know, it must have ruined their lives for a day. Well, say la vie. Say la vie. And Jeffrey. Fuck religion. <laughs> That's my final thought. All religions. Yeah. Fuck religion. Organized religion. Yeah. 
And uh, my final Big business. Thought, my final <laughs> thought is hopefully tomorrow we'll have a Festivus Miracle. Oh, yeah. And we'll have Bob Chapman on. We'll have Skype working. And we'll have a great show for you. Coming up tomorrow afternoon, Thursday, December 23rd, 2010. Be sure and join us on American Freedom Radio for another exciting edition of Freedom Files. Yeah. Freedom Files. Freedom Files. Weekdays. Files. Monday through Friday from 3 to 5 p.m. Central. On American Freedom Radio. Freedom Radio.